Hello, folks. It's weekender time. And on this week's show, Justin is uncertain about our indie. Ben watches an empire go down in flames. Free explores strange new worlds. And I take a punt at a fantasy football game. As well as all of that, one lucky subscriber will be on the chance to win Kill Team Octarius when we hit 100,000 subs on YouTube. So make sure you smash that subscribe button and ding the dong to be informed whenever we upload any videos. But right now, sit back and relax because we're going to take you through a week's worth of tabletop gaming news and your weekend starts now. Hello, everybody. It's Friday. It's five o'clock. It's Cracker Jack. No, that's not. <laughs> it's been that in a while. Um, yeah, never mind. It's the weekender. It's the weekend. Almost as good. That no Cracker Jack pencil or cabbage for anyone, mind you. However, we do have a whole host of hobby and tabletop news from across the industry to take you through. Uh, I'm joined this week by Justina, Hello. Benjamina, and Freya. <laughs> oh, you, you at least get to be Norse. I do. I at least got a, an award. You just, you just get an adorable name, Josh. Those are those are our oh, masters. Adorable. The universe names. So you just put yeah. ear at the end of it. And it'll be fine. Very much. So that's exactly <laughs> how that works. Um, I have a Jaria. Jaria sounds Jaria. like you know. Yeah, yeah, Jaria. No, that, that, yeah no, that's that's a better. Root. It does sound a bit like a bit infectious disease. Yeah. <laughs> I'm very much like an infectious disease. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, once I'm there, you can't get rid of me. <laughs> so sit it back and relax, because for the next 90 minutes, you're stuck with us. Uh, we're going to kick things off this week with our Indie of the Week, mm. which is a wonderful world of uncertain MDF scenery. This is one that Justin found for us. Yeah, so um, as we all know, the world is starting to get back to normal-ish. So loot is coming up. So I was starting to have a look through some of the traders that are going to be there to see who's interesting and who I might want to bring us along to see. And this one actually really jumped out to me because they do a nice mix of different skills of HDF terrain for some sci-fi, some fantasy stuff, some historical stuff. And they do some ancillary pieces as well that I really like the look of. Mm -hmm. So whenever we land on the homepage, uh, where do we want to go first, folks? <gasps> I, I, well, me being me, I would just start left and work my way right because mm -hmm. that's what i am you know, uh, i like see that. you see jerry can read yeah <laughs> so in, in that case i'm spending six more amount of time mil. on six mil mm. i imagine this this is right up john strasser he's been talking I'll about is, yeah. putting up some little boards like he can make his own modular six mil hex maps mm. that's nice see i'm um, Myself and John have been looking at Battletech recently, and I'm wondering, would these have work you? well for no you? Way. <laughs> you no way! You John have been wait. looking at Battletech? Wow! You kept that quiet. Okay, okay. I, I, I need to rephrase that slightly, because I know John has probably been bending people's ears. We've been playing games, so actually getting games on, shock horror, and I'm wondering I if I could use these to actually you know, make a nice sort of 2.5D terrain for the game. Because at be the minute cool. we we only have yeah. like the the cardboard set up for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's no reason why you can't. These are all fine yeah. for it. No. Although you know you really want to get more modularity on top of them. But it's mm. quite nice to have hex boards anyway. Yeah. Definitely. But they don't just do those. It's not just six mil. No, it's it's incremental scales, mm -hmm. and and as they go up scales, the uh, the things stay relatively similar but the amount mm -hmm. of detail on them increases. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So if we have a look at this upslope ramp slash underground car park, mm -hmm. which in the yeah. 8 to 10 mil, so perfect for... Infinity might well, be good. Too, too small for Infinity, perfect for bot wars, if you want to try stompy robots. Kick. Or drop zone commander. Drop zone as well, yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it'd be ideal for that. It'd be really nice to see that, actually. Just really nice. Democracy yeah. coming Spewing out of the underground car park, you know, stamped on by something <laughs> massively tall and bot like. Yeah, uh, 
Yeah. yeah. The modularity of it's the I think the key thing there because you yeah. can have one city set up and then immediately yeah. turn it to make, it, make it look like an entirely different district, which I think is really yeah. nice. So. See, I, I do love the variety that he has, he has built in here just for all of the, the different sort of city sections you can do. And mm. even you see some of those like super tall ones, mm. there's actually one thing you get there. It's just like an additional spacer that you just build in and put in below. That's nice. That's so nice. It means that the pieces that you're building onto the higher sections aren't locked into being a higher section like piece. That. So modular on top of modular. Yeah. I think one of the things that a lot of gaming tables tend to lack anyway is height. Mm. Like, because a, a lot of the time people go wide and, and they embrace mm. the breadth of gaming tables. Yeah. And they don't tend to look at height and stuff. And I think that's incredibly important in a lot of games just to give you a sense of scale in many cases, mm. Mm. especially if you're in an, an uh, well, in, in an urban environment, if you're just going to be playing it out on sort of like roads with ruins on, you never truly get a sense of scale. But if you then suddenly have a tank next to, you know, how massive a actual freeway is or something, mm -hmm. you suddenly the scale of what you're playing suddenly yeah. becomes more apparent, I think, which is really cool. So Yeah. And yeah. the the sunken components are nice as well, because most of the components have that initial raised layer to them. Mm -hmm. But he's also designed ones which are that that sub level. Which is a, a nice aspect to have to add that that extra dimension down in there, you yeah, know, a little lower. Nice. So you can have your uh, Terminator driving away with John Connor on his bike. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and you plow an articulated lorry <laughs> off the bridge after him. Oh, yeah. 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 Sold. Screaming. Sold yeah, already, Jerry. Sucks. I'm I'm it now. I've, I've always been sold on the idea of like freeways and stuff oh. for sci fi games because a lot of people don't tend to do that kind of thing. Mm. But I love the idea of doing like a big chase sequence on a tabletop. Yeah. And then you pack a freeway with lots of like discarded and ruined cars and all that kind of thing. Mm. And then you have to have your troops maneuvering through them as they're fighting up a freeway and stuff. I think very cool. That's yeah. their little, uh, they have a little lozenge locking lug. So mm -hmm. those are covered up whenever you actually build them up. Lozenge locking lug. What a bit of alliteration. Uh, I'm all about the alliteration, you know. I think what yeah. this is really interesting for me as well because I'm I'm seeing because you're seeing the different levels, you can really see what you can put onto the table with this. Mm -hmm. And this for me, I'm a massive fan of Gears of War. <laughs> this looks like Gears of War to me. Yeah. This is the kind of stuff that you'd put. At, it's just seeing the different levels allows you to see what kind of opportunities yeah. you could put on the table, and that's cool. Where are my Drodica? <laughs> Bet, better than that, it's the close the blast doors, close the blast doors, Ben, <laughs> from uh, Star Wars. Yeah. Uh, New Hope. Open the blast doors. I like that they're called far away blast doors. <laughs> like far, far away. It's just a little piece. You you just just need need to to that looks like they actually slide to close as well. Yeah, yep, which is really, yep. wow, that's if, really cool. If I somebody, to just as a background for um, photographing my Star Wars minis. Oh. Right. <laughs> that's great. If at least one person does not Indiana Jones through that door, I will be disappointed. <laughs> yeah. And then reach back for their helmet, yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's really awesome. Oh, wow, I love those. Yeah. These, these seem like a really nice way to put, like, so a lot of, the, I think it was, uh, was it foreground? Many mm. year, well, a couple of years ago now, put together a, a star destroyer, didn't they? For mm. the for interior for playing out the uh, yeah. Legion. Yeah. I think this there would like be cool one. for doing something similar to that. Or you could use that as like a tag hanger in. Uh, in, in well, that'd be um, great for yeah for tags in Infinity, and yeah. then you have the two tags set up in there, and you have both the pilot rushing to get into them, yeah. and one's got to stop the other one before they do. Oh man, that'd be yeah. cool. Yeah, but you see, if, if you wanted to do like a storage diorama <laughs> with this. Do it like a tag. Oh, yeah, 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 that'd be nice. So you can just have it sitting on your yeah. shelf with everybody standing around it working on them. Oh, man, use that for games day or something and have a dreadnought in the center with yep. the cockpit open and then maneuvering the uh, sarcophagus into place and stuff like that. That'd be really cool. That would yeah. be pretty cool. I like how they also have um, the option so you can pop out the, mm. the ladder. covers, yeah. top and bottom. So Interactive gaming terrain. Well, mm -hmm. if, if you're playing something like a, a dungeon crawler, mm -hmm. uh, being able to go, well, no, those ones are locked off, but those ones yeah. are, yeah. you know, so your, your players know where they can go. Well, if, if you wanted to build like a multi-level thing for something like core space and mm -hmm. just go absolutely crazy, that could yeah. be fun. That'd be really nice. Speaking of absolutely crazy. <laughs> the square one. <laughs> the square one, eh? <laughs> because it's not just a square. Everything uh, is modular. It all comes apart in various ways. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow, indeed. 
Yeah. I love that. That's beautiful. You can take mm. some gorgeous pictures in these. Yeah, well, if we well, had the, the article earlier. <laughs> yeah, we had, we had the article earlier this week about doing good miniature photographies. Yeah. Having small enclosed components of terrain like this would be very good because anytime I'm doing like cover images and stuff, terrain like this is stuff that I will quickly grab off the shelf, lay out, lay whatever miniatures I want into, take yeah. the shot, and then use it for like cover images and stuff. So it's really, really good for that. Yeah. I like the big acrylic rods going down yeah. through these um, corner pieces as if there's some sort of either lighting yeah. setup or a energy chamber type thing. I wonder mm-hmm. if they come with, or are they just something? Are they can, hollow? That would be cool if they were uh, hollow. Oh, no, yep, they're not. Fill it up with yeah, supplied. Yeah. So that's nice. But mm-hmm. you, you, could, you could probably light them up anyway. Strip yeah. Days. Oh, yes. Just, oh, just behind just them. Pinging up yeah. to, yeah. 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 Or if you get some like conductive paint, you can actually paint in your circuit rate and then have the wiring just oh God, in yeah. behind all the double layers. Mm. Very nice. Well, that, that that's one that Tim Chubb uh, from the website showed me years ago that he had done with a foreground house, and it was gorgeous because it was there was no wiring, no messy cabling. It was just like, yeah, between this layer, between this layer, paint that. There you go. And uh, Warren used it on his never-ending dungeons, dun- dungeon scene. So he <laughs> did. <laughs> One day they'll get finished. Have a look at that. <laughs> <laughs> it, it may get finished. Who knows? Oh, it, was, it was originally built to fit a different house. Yes, that's true. Yeah. Man, nice. That's really I nice. love freeways. I mean, oh. that's excellent. You, for, you could put a stargate at the end of that. Sorry, mm. but it's asking for one. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know. I would do this. You're much more would... hopeful of our future, whereas I literally <laughs> see this and I thought, Judge Dredd. That's right. Oh, our future has gone wrong oh. and only fascists can save us. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but e- even if you you got some like sci-fi vehicles, you could you could homebrew like a, a total wipeout game. That'd be nice, yeah. yeah. How long? Or would just you use say? Gaslands or something like that. Be... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you could do like a sci-fi Gaslands. How long would you say taking MDF to raid like this will take to paint? Not very. Not very long, no. You wouldn't need to invest loads of time in painting this. No. Break out the airbrush. <laughs> well, airbrush. If, if you right. think, so first thing you're going to do, rattle can, obviously. Yeah. Get your airbrush in, do some shading and stuff. Maybe throw, depending on if you want it clean or dirty, throw some like weathering liquids into it or weathering sprays. Yeah. And just like dirty it up and then just pick out some high points of contrast and color and you're pretty much done. Yeah. I painted the Gargant, which is pretty much all MDF, mm-hmm. right? Uh, in two days. Nice. So, there you go. So but it would be about gonna... the size of a couple of these pieces. Mm-hmm. You know, it, no, it's, you can get through it fairly quickly. Yeah, especially oh, where there's a lot of stuff like this on it, where you've got mm. more color detail. It's it's worse if it's a lot of flat areas that you're having to add additional you have detail. To do additional detailing, or, yeah, yeah. You don't need to. I mean, it's there layered in. There's a lot of engraved detail. It's in already this. etched, yeah. yeah, yeah. Very necromunda as well. Mm. It is yep. quite necromunda. Yep. Or dead zone. I see a vermin oh. climbing up one. See, yes, yeah. Chem, <laughs> chem spitter as well. What a <laughs> filth wizard. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's Jerry's favorite saying. It's just filth wizard. Filth wizard. Filth wizard. It's a great way to say. Cousin to the badger. <laughs> uh, moving, moving away from modular <laughs> uh, actual building pieces, then. So at the moment, yeah. only in twenty-eight mil. Nothing in the. Uh, no, they they have them in the smaller yeah. scales as well. But it, there's a, a but limited they're not, they're not, they're not, they're not yeah. subdivided. Yeah. Okay. That's yeah. how we look see here then. <gasps> Most I like the big radar dish. Yeah, that's nice. What's different here? Options pack. Oh, let's have a look at the options pack. What's our options? Oh, we have options. Uh, different design engraved into the actual panels, I think. Oh, uh, okay. Yep. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because there you see you've got the lined version rather than the Yeah, it's, it's the more mm-hmm. traditional one, and then that's oh, a little more hexy. sci-fi. Oh, I see. This oh, is the all, sci-fi version. They're all for that. That's <laughs> Texas are always sci-fi. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Space station equivalent. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. More mm-hmm. for that. Yes. Oh, I like that they've designed the destroyed buildings as also helpful ways to carry a, a, away your dead troops. That's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just laid my Not a huge amount of detail on the destroyed building, to be fair. Yeah, but if, if you're a tournament organizer and you're looking to get a lot of, like, just shaped terrain area terrain onto a table it's not why it's not why they're children children (laughs) here's a knife here's some foam core get the cutting 
we we all see how Jerry works within the world. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, you know. Yeah, we'll the we'll the, the new political we, party coming soon. Before we start moving up, what well, oh. new political party? Tories have been here for years. Like child labor. <laughs> Nothing new about this. That's delightful. See, That's yeah. gorgeous. That's different. Mm-hmm. Tell you very Judge Dredd esque. Just stick that yeah. side of one of your buildings, and then. Oh yeah. Have your your lawmasters driving over that bridge, and away you go. Yeah. Now, I know they do this in some different scales. So you see yeah. some of those motorways, you could just have like a line of these going down the sides of your motorway as if they're the street lamps. Oh, really? Yeah, that'd be cool. Do you know what a lot of this, um, I've been playing it recently and it's just kind of switched another day at the Corpse, Glorious Day at the Corpse with Alien. Oh, oh Alien. Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. This kind of terrain would look nice with that. It would, especially if you, you, you had that in the background of some dusty, sooty cityscape or something. That'd be really cool. Yeah. yeah. Handy little pillboxes. Mm-hmm. Quite nice for obviously Flames of War, mm-hmm. like World War II in general. Anyway, yeah. fifteen mm-hmm. mil. It's perfect for that. Yeah, yeah. But the, the twenty mil is where it shines. Is the oh. Yep. Mm-hmm. oh yes. <clears throat> Here we go. <laughs> we should probably break We've this seen down. We've somebody before, haven't we? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, if we yes. go to the castle first. Seems okay, like okay. a good option. Oh, this. Oh, look at the castle. Look yeah. at that. I think it's uh, every. I think it's every uh, gamer's dream to have a castle set that yeah. you can do a siege on because I, castles I are amazing. <laughs> Did you have the old my, Citadel uh, ones? Yeah, it, Jerry? T- yeah, two of the mighty fortresses, and my friend buggered off to Sligo with them. How dare he? <laughs> well, well, very much. <laughs> How dare he? Knock on his door and be like, "Do you remember me?" <laughs> oh, that, I wonder if that portcullis goes up and down. Oh, yeah, possible. There's a lot of individual detail in all the bricks there is. as well. There's a little. Uh, wooden, holes. wooden thing just above the gate. So I imagine if you pulled that out, the pole yeah. this might go down. Perhaps. Yeah, well, there's a picture of it down there. So yeah. Oh yay! And it's oh, it fits a large horde, so it's perfect <laughs> for Kings of War siege. Bam, bam, Which if bam. anybody's looking for, I updated the rules on the Kings of War forum from second to third edition, so you can play that. Oh, oh, yeah, good man. Jerry has many many strings to his bow. He does. <laughs> uh, certainly when it comes to Kings of War, I do. That's yeah, because really there, nice. there it is completely deployed oh. with the door shut behind it. That's yeah. beautiful. I like the That's layering really works door. for that poor colour. It well. really it, does. It does. Uh, gives it a sense of weight. Mm. It doesn't look so flat, this. It doesn't look so square building. It's, mm. yeah. It, I, um, yeah, gorgeous. Yeah, and Again, I love the fact for, that... Sorry. Oh, sorry, Ben. I was going to say, perfect for photogra- f- photographs, because you can have a little person going... Ah! <laughs> before the oil comes down on the so, yeah. that's what you need a little person yeah. going ah yeah. no, I, I do love the upgrade that they've done for this where you can put in the leaded windows into this oh, yeah. so if, if you want to make it a little bit more fancy a little more fancy yeah. you can just make it like this is this is the tower where wow. the hostage is being oh, kept oh you definitely stained glass those wouldn't you oh yeah oh, oh yeah they're very nice Mm-hmm. Oh, there I saw someone painting st- stained glass onto acrylics. Yeah, and uh, they said it was a painstaking process, but, <laughs> but it, was, uh, it did work. So. John has done some recently, so it's maybe worth asking him about it on Sunday. Cool. He's been doing his sisters of battle stuff, hasn't he? So uh-huh. stained glass for days. Yeah, on at least one of the vehicles. So I was talking to him earlier about it, and he's he's well. Talk to him on Sunday. <laughs> he's, dead, the, he's dead now. <laughs> Yeah. John couldn't make it. Acry- acrylic paint markers are your friends if you're looking oh, at yeah, yeah. things like that. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Rather than having to handle a brush. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Very cool. Oh man. But it also removes brush strokes quite quite well. Uh, so by using the brush markers. If we go back to the main castle thing, how yes. much is how much are each of the different components for this? So if we look at it. So a wall is twenty quid. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. Gatehouse thirty five. Uh-huh. And then Hours of 35. Small sections, 50. Okay, so it's not too expensive. 60, 95. I'm just trying to think what it would be to recreate the old Mighty Fortress. So three walls and a gatehouse is 95. And then four towers is 120, 215. Mm-hmm. Pricey enough. Pricey, mm-hmm. but, you know. It mm, is. It looks at the end of it, you're going to have a very, very pretty piece. And I think that makes it worth it. Mm. And the the engineering that has went into this looks to be on point. Oh look, a dwarf! Dwarf. Yeah, <laughs> I was about to say the exact same thing. <laughs> no ben way. Perks up. <laughs> oh, dwarf gives you a good idea of scale, though. So it's human scale doors, yeah. but 
because yeah. you got the yeah. dwarf halfway down there. <laughs> oh, that dwarf would have to go inside with bless him. <laughs> Not thin enough to fit through that door. My hammer is too big. <laughs> That's interesting. Uh-huh. So while it's while it's on the pricier side, the footprint on that is two, four, five. Oh, wow. Almost six by six. Which means it's big. substantially oh. bigger than the old Mighty Fort reset is or any of the wow. kind of plastics by a considerable way the the footprint for the fortress would probably have filled a third of the top of that. Mm. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. You know, it, it was very small in comparison. So it is much bigger. Then. You, well, can if you, actually, think of, you can actually play with it. You can, you put, can put a regiment train the top. You can put regiment <laughs> put units yeah. in there to actually play the game. And yep. at that wow. point... That hatch is nice as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The, nice uh, feature. Yeah. I love the layered details and like the, the crenellations there. Yeah. And the arrow slittings. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's yeah, really nice. Murder holes. <laughs> now, are you sure it's a, a murder hole or just you know somewhere for someone to take a leak? Oh, no, Probably got, both. <laughs> they could do that between the ventilation if they needed to. It, it would be murder to be pissed off. So, um, <laughs> I mean, if, if you if you're going between the ventilation and yeah, oh, bad plan. These are my favourite. I love the old world stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This just calls for a nice fan. This calls Moonstone for me, Jerry. Mm. Yeah. These agreed. buildings are Moonstone. Just looking at the important things. Bridge. <laughs> uh-huh. Covered bridge. Bridge from Beetlejuice. Yeah. Yes. It is. Yes. Oh, no. I hope nobody goes over <laughs> the edge <laughs> into the river below. Oh, floating. Be oh, what's she? <laughs> I've seen far too many movies, horror movies that include bridges like that, which have hooked, ha- hook-handed killers on the other end of them mm. as well. So uh, yeah. the yeah, shops these, are beautiful. These Tudor style things are. They are. They they're calling for some moonstone love. These are. Mm-hmm. Reminds me of Merry Old Ludlow. That does. It's lovely. <laughs> and these are the ones where you can put in the optional windows at the front. Nice. Uh, well. Yes. So that was something I was really enjoying about this. Is there are those upgrade pieces. Page. Uh, if you scroll, yeah. oh yeah, oh, they've got detailed like interiors as well. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So there's your regular, yeah, and there's minty, yeah, and you can do it on the ground floor and the top floor. Mm. Nice or oh, deluxe. Yeah. Oh, yeah. so <sighs> it's little details like that that allow you to take and get multiples of the same kit, but not have it look as if the entire town has been built by a guy with mm. just one set of plans going, we'll do this one. Mm. You know what would look great in stuff like this? The terrain crate. Yeah. 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 It'd fit in really well. Yeah. A lot of pallets up top mm. for your child labor. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then nicer furniture on the lower floors for the real people. Uh, yeah. <laughs> And then all the barrels and boxes out the front for the the product of the levers. Lovely. I like the hatch in the roof. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I mean, the the amount of engraving work that's being done in here, it it feels quality. Yeah. I mean, what's stopping you from using this as a tavern? How much is one of those? Scroll up a bit, Jerry. 35. 35. <laughs> 35 quid. How much did I get me one of those? Yeah. Well, it's just because it's very interesting because, like, you you compare that. To, um, I was trying to work out how much a building like that would be in resin. And I would imagine you were looking at something maybe towards sort of like 50, 60 quid, perhaps. Mm. Oh, yeah. So you're, you're definitely making a saving on a resin building. And like, you're also Ramp getting a lot more hammer. detail. What yeah. savings? <laughs> Uh, yeah. And then on top of that, it's you have the joy of building it. Mm. Unless you hit building HDF, in which case you're crazy on the heat. I've built one HDF building, and it was a little tiny um, Burroughs and Badges building, and I got so annoyed <laughs> that I didn't build the tavern in the end. So <laughs> but I, have, I have three big Burroughs and Badges kits that I've never never finished, really. I built the I built the, the one hole. But, uh, what was it you disliked about it? I just found sticking it together to be a pain in the ass. Right. Yeah. You know, I know the, the best tip you can get for building anything like this. Go. Yeah. So you put your PVA down your seam, put it together, and then you get a, a spot of super glue and mm. tack weld it at the corners. Because um, okay. it basically is a chemical bond then, gives the rest of it time to set. Fair. Wow. My problem, what I find that I don't necessarily connect with MDF or, or wooden, as it were, um, terrain, is that I feel that it feels too flat for me. I feel mm. like it does look like bits of wood stuck together. Yeah. This yeah. isn't. 
this isn't at all. So with yes, your three-story house yeah. that's using different levels, even the wood on the outside is protruding. Yeah. 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 Uh, it's, one of, it's, it's one of the things that I think Foreground did really well with their stuff is that they designed it so that you had depth to to the buildings. Yeah. So they're pre-coloured as well. So you, you got past that initial stumbling block, I think, which is really cool. Oh, yeah. Uh, and you get it obviously in yeah. this as well. So No, there is oh. a really nice little cheat you can do with these as well, free. Go on. So you see if you like paint them super, super quick. Yeah. Yeah. Do a primed colour while they're still on the frame and then build it. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, that makes sense. That's a beautiful you know, windmill. Fine, all your burnt edges won't have colour on them, but then you're just painting in the burnt edges. Very clever. <laughs> that must be quite big considering how big the door is at the bottom. Uh-huh. That's where, that's where Jonathan Creek lives. <laughs> <laughs> Again, I'm seeing an age gap between us. I immediately thought Wendy Miller. <laughs> Trump. Well, I think Creek's pretty old. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's <laughs> really nice. Not as old as Wendy Miller. Wow. Yeah. Oh, is this a, is there a mechanic here? It does. Does this bit, move? Yeah. Yep. It looks, it looks like, like it got the, if it doesn't, they've at least included the rollers that would have been there in mm-hmm. the actual mechanical version make turn, to make yeah. it turn. Uh-huh. Wow. Um, just need to get like a uh, bill stone together. It's movable, it's movable sails and removable wall sections for 45 access. centimeters across the sails. That's huge. Oh my lord. That's quite big. And mm-hmm. 28 centimeters deep, including the walkway and I love that, 48 I love, high. I love that all of these are so big that it says these are made to order. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, the, the other thing is, don't forget, with this being a smaller company. Mm-hmm. They can't afford to hold stock the whole yeah, time. Yeah, true. Yeah. So something like this, saying it's made to order, absolutely fair enough. Something special. Yeah, you're not going to bulk make them. There was, one, there was one more thing in the old world on page one. <gasps> it, was, mm-hmm. it was the the little fairy tale bridge, which I thought was really nice, the arched mm-hmm. one. That's one. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. I just, I just love that. I think that would great. look really nice in a Zen garden as well. Some mm-hmm. form of... Um, I, you know. I, I, I want some little billy goats. To make their way across that. Mm, did you see the um the walkway that looked straight from you know Huckleberry Ferry bridge yeah. to bridge? Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. And you, there is always a scenario in any skirmish game or any war game that involves bridges, and you need bridges. So you mm. put some of these over some like you know battlefield in a box rivers or something. And you're mm-hmm. good to go. So, yeah. Cool. Very cool. And again, you, you would look perfect in Moonstone. Mm. It would. And yeah. you've got some of those fantasy tires as well. Oh, sci-fi way. containers are always good. They look familiar. Spaceship we, interiors. We, I feel we've seen the industrial tower before. Mm-hmm. I think we have in smaller scales and stuff. Yeah. But look at this. Oh, look how oh, modular that is. My. Yes. <laughs> nice. That is cool. Whoa, that's cool. Oh, you know what I want to do with this? I want to do, you know, the, the Netflix series that did uh, Lost in Space? No. Yeah. Have, have one of the robots chasing the Robinson family down this. It's the Danger Will Robinson. Series. There is a Netflix They remake series. it. Yes, they did. Oh, and my it's God. Surprisingly very good. I'm waiting for season three next year. I think it's better than the movie, though. So that's good. Oh, yeah, yeah. The, 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 the one with Joey? Yes. Although I did, there's that one scene with Joey. I like that film. That one it's scene so where he's, bad. It's he good. uses that helmet that sort of clanks down over his face. I think that's really cool. That's like the only cool bit of that movie. Oh, no, I, no, no. I, I quite like Gary. I like the little animal thing. What was the little animal thing in oh, that? Oh, Glark? Was, there we go. I liked that. I'm surprised I still remember its name. Hmm. Oh, no, the little gorgeous. fan on that. Is that a fan? It's a little the fan. Detail they've the added top, yeah. one. Nice. For the it's recycled air clean. they're pumping through the facility. Yeah. Yeah. My only issue with this would be with my fat fingers and cack handedness. What are the chances of me getting miniatures in and out of that? <laughs> I know there's it looks like there's plenty of room there. Yeah. But I'm also very aware that i You I'm need a little cutting stick. Oh, yeah. oh grabby, grabby thing would be fine. Yeah. No, just put in a little yeah, conveyor at the bottom and then they'll move themselves, Jerry. <laughs> yeah. Like you see. What you, what you do is you just get like a little magnet that you pop a magnet on all your miniatures' heads on it, and then put a magnet on a stick and just hold them on the magnet to yes. pop them in, and then just slide them off. Very nice. What is this? It's landing, landing platform. platform. Ah. That's the the bum end that you would ah. see. The bum end. Nice. And that's it's deployed. Very nice. Again, very infinity. 
Mm. Or stick stick a big enforcer flyer on the end of those. Yeah. Oh yeah. Mm. Mm. You know, just a group yeah, of the enforcers <laughs> <laughs> shooting down a horde of vermin. Yeah. Yeah, I'm death cool. Vermin are people that, too. Yeah. The thing that's really cool about this, and I think we've demonstrated by how we've been describing each of the pieces that we've seen, is that it's getting you thinking about interesting scenarios and narratives. Mm. And that's something that you really want from a train. You don't want it to just be a house. You wanted to be like, oh, so this house belonged to this person, and I could use house this as a blacksmith story. Yeah. 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 Now and here's it, something I truly love about this company. You see all these additional little scatter pieces. Mm-hmm. You see, if you're a scratch builder, they're great for you because you can then just start buying individual like stairways and stuff to mm-hmm. build into your stuff without having to like rob Peter to pay Paul from other kits. Mm. Yeah. Chew pineapple. <laughs> That's cool for just like you could use that as some kind of hab thing, yeah. On yeah. A hab block on a on a, a Martian planet. I think that'd be really yeah. cool. So it wouldn't necessarily have to be the tunnel of a spaceship yeah. or a facility. Yeah, it could just be a, a, a like a science hab block that's been put down by researchers or something, or just um, tons of storage containers. Yeah, I can see people on a spaceship sleeping in these, transporting <laughs> to another place. You know. Yeah. Oh, have you ever watched Pandorum? They had things oh, like that. I have seen Pandora. Yeah, it's actually not bad. <laughs> I like it. Yeah, it's very cool. Yeah. Yeah, everybody are they toothpicks? Because if that's they look toothpicks, like toothpicks, that's genius. That is really... I think they are. Yeah. They got just I think the ends they off. are. What a cool know. idea for handles. Yeah. That is well, a it's, very it's, cool idea. It's the old question. How do you engineer a round piece into essentially something that always cuts square? Just get a round piece. <laughs> yeah. Put it. That's what it do is. Uh, I like nice. those. So, very cool. I like those a lot. He's painted mm-hmm. Again, very cargo nice. containers are always just a really mm-hmm. versatile piece of terrain that you can throw in anywhere. Yeah. Quite like this. The elevator? Or it's, a it's a ladder. Piece. Ah. It's a ladder. It's got a slot on piece oh. to take a base of a figure. That's so nice. That's, so that is you don't genius. go the, they're halfway up the ladder, you go they're where they're Easier. sitting. So instead of yeah. it being uncertain terrain, <laughs> hey. Hey. we've got. To, I should have said uncertain terrain. Damn it! But anyway, oh. <laughs> still good, Ben. Still good. Soon. Do it again. We'll fix it in the edit. We won't. <laughs> no. Uh, okay. 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 Wait. 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 Instead of, instead of it being uncertain scenery, <laughs> <laughs> that's all staying. It's a it's funny, it, it's the ben. <laughs> this is a very. That was very Buffy the Vampire Slayer jumping into the distance and uh, <laughs> closing the gate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Excellent stuff. What else we got? We have paint racks as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, this nice. is for different yeah. bottle types, which is cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's a bread and butter piece. Yeah. 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 Any any laser company worth their salt is going to be making this kind of stuff. Mm. Storage and yeah. Mm-hmm. I like the fact that the drawers actually have an acrylic front on them. So you can see what you've, That's nice. you've hidden, what you've you can see what you've hidden in them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just put these down away for another day. I can still see them. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I actually, re- I actually really like the drawers. I think the drawers are a cool idea. I think yeah. they're something that would be nice for a lot of people because you want storage places for your miniatures as well as just your paints. Yeah. Uh, rather than them just being relegated to bags or, you know, takeaway containers or something. So. Even just like all your wait, takeaway containers? I use takeaway containers to store my miniatures. Yeah. Okay. You're just giving me ideas here. Thank line you. them with bubble wrap, and then you know, you'll off, leave you go. Fine. Yeah. off you go. Yeah. Okay, so you're gonna pull out, uh, pull out your miniatures and go. Oh, that was a good curry. Hey, you go, wash them. them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, don't, you don't just you don't pour it on the plate and then immediately scrape whatever miniatures were on the table off. Into, oh, they're that. safe now. Look, my, my lovely that. Yeah. tandoori. How did we get to that? <laughs> <laughs> it's a way of painting, I suppose. It's more staining. In many respects, yeah, I know. Right? So, you can uh, certainly uh, get some interesting colours from. Cario. I mean, if, if if you're looking to do like splatter effects or gore parts, sure. Hey, who knows? You might find a new technique in there somewhere. Just. <laughs> <laughs> the I look like Bob's markers. Swiss Army measurement tool. I like that. Yeah. yeah. I like tokens. these. I don't know what they are. Yeah. General cool. tokens are always great. Yeah, I think they're just sort of. Oh, I, I get you. So it's scale of monster mm-hmm. type thing. Mm-hmm. Oh you yeah, it's coming at you. Yeah, oh, ten twenty-five mil for human enemies. Yeah, which is handy if you're 
playing a game or playing a skirmish game or, you know, if you're Rangers of Shadow Deep, you know, maybe mm-hmm. you don't have a box of several hundred additional miniatures. Mm-hmm. And if it goes, you encounter six giant rats, then you can just go, here's rat one to six. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then Although maybe what you can also do paper is... disc or something to yeah. on the top. Mm-hmm. What you can also do, though, is say it's uh, Fog of War. You know, oh, there's yeah, something yeah, yeah. there, it's this big, but you don't but know what it is yet. Counters. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. Like that. Smoke marker is great. Nice. Stick them on the top of your tanks. Yep. yep. Yeah. Or just use cotton wool. <laughs> yeah, or just put them down as a center point for, say, an AOE. So you just measure from the center of that. Smoke yeah. and destroyed. Cute. I, I think, well, well should we finish? Orbs. Oh, What's I have to finish with this. The measurement tool. So it has all sorts of things on it. That's nice. Handy. 90 degrees, 45 fire arcs and for the for the pedant in your group three, <laughs> four to six inch yeah <laughs> i assume that cutout is just there to make it easier to hold hold yeah, yeah. Not for anything so. else particular yeah. i imagine yeah. although that is still so you've got one two three four six you've six inch measuring tool uh-huh it's quite nice and also your arc great for kings of war I That's find cool. it interesting that on the furthest corner they put the 90 degree when all corners are 90 degree. But... <laughs> I know. <laughs> you, you can hold the back and point to it and then you have the longest edges yeah. to actually measure from. True. Yeah. Yeah. My thinking anyway, I could be wrong. <laughs> Handy nevertheless. Yeah. Saying there was anything else, have a look at the was, Yeah, we'll just look at the customer gallery because I think just yeah. to this dish off some of the finished pieces, which is nice. Yeah, uh, yeah. there's some folks have sent in pictures that are quite funny. <laughs> like that very first there's one. Even a, even a real life dragon in that one. That's cool. <laughs> a real life dragon. Yeah. <sighs> nice, nice dense multi layer terrain that you can. Necromunda, yeah. Uh, it's dead zone. Uh, no, it's necromunda yeah. though, doesn't it? Uh, that it's the yeah. main dead zone terrain with the base being yeah, their terrain. Modular bases. Mm. Are there any more pictures of that? Or have they just sent in the one? Oh, oh, and B. Hey. Only fairy is... company, unless Gosh. you have to go in between certain ports. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's so. Yeah, I do like the fact that this person has engineered a way to actually hang the hatch open. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That little bit of wire, that's a nice touch that they've came up with. Mm. Makes a bit more static, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Danger, danger, Will Robinson. Oh, oh, O&P. Yeah. I've had a, they're quite the shipment from O&P recently. <laughs> <laughs> oh, quite nice. Where's, where's Dragon? Oh, Up to the very top left. <gasps> There's for scale. Lizard for scale. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. If people were wondering exactly how big the top of that octagonal yes. tower is. It's, it will, it will it's hold one, the lizard. <laughs> whatever that. I'm really interested in seeing people's animals next to for scale. So if anybody's got a cat next to a castle, I'm yeah. well up for it. <laughs> yeah, if you, if you scroll further down, yeah, you see uh, third up on the right. Uh huh. There's a longer shot of that table. Oh man. Oh, that's, that's cool. Yeah, that's very nice. Two and shots. again, you've got those multi-layer levels in below. So you've got the storage bay below them. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah, that yeah, shows you how big the oh my god the windmill is huge yeah, yeah. the windmill no, is huge it's, it's almost half a meter tall yeah. wow so yeah they're playing vanguard on that they are aren't they yeah. they are yeah. Yeah. somebody's using <laughs> trident realm of neuretica there mm-hmm. there's a really big bottle of water they should worry about inside that castle <laughs> <laughs> trying to work out what they're playing against but i'm not gonna see it yeah that's really awesome fans. is it me <laughs> oh i unbox those did you? <laughs> They're from uh, War Games Exclusive. That's their uh, servitor yeah. pack. They're doing yeah. cleaning and carrying and stuff. They're great. Nice. I love that one polishing. Yeah, that was one of my favorite in the set. That's great. Some yeah, also put their own lights in. More. Yeah, which is the nice um, the satellites are gorgeous. The mm. the satellites painted up. Yeah, especially like the ruined versions of them as well. Yes. Yeah. Oh, see, look at that. That oh, doesn't yeah. look like wood at all. Like. Yeah, that's I mean, perfect yeah. for uh, Sean Bean to get killed on. Mm. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Ideal. Yeah, I mean, for me, I would drop those straight into like something like Fallout. Yeah, that'd be nice for that. Yeah. We were right to drop soon. Yep. Uh, using the board section and the cardboard terrain as well. Mm. I will maintain Bot Wars. Bot Wars. I, I want to smash giant stumpy robots with other giant or stumpy <laughs> robots. 
I think everyone does now, Jerry. <laughs> yeah. Everyone's everyone's on your side. Oh. That. Oh, Why? it came from below. below. <laughs> Be careful what you flush in space. It may come back. <laughs> Just say. <laughs> He's very angry. That's very terrific cool. stuff. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Space pirate. Yeah. Space pirate. So I'm I'm gonna say I think I did good with this pick. Mm. I yeah. think you did. I think that's really cool. You, you mm. get to live. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> well, that's our indie of the week. That was uncertainscenery.com. Definitely worth checking out. We're going to take a quick swish, and when we come back, we'll be getting stuck into the news. Coming to you from the center of Northwestern Europe. Covering board games, war games, card games, and all that shit you love. It's the Muck News. <laughs> all right, then, we are back with the latest and greatest across the gaming industry's news for this week. Where are we starting, Benjamin? Mm. Well, we are starting uh, with something a little little bit quick, but it's the end to an epic saga. Um, So Cubicle 7 have now announced that you can get your hands on Empire in Ruins and the Empire in Ruins Companion Mm -hmm. uh, from Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay for the newest edition of the game. Now, the Empire and Ruins book uh, is a revamp and rework of an existing book that came out back when the game was young and twee <laughs> uh, and has now been sort of uh, tweaked and reworked for the new edition and also to fix some issues, I guess you'd say, with the campaign that needed to be sorted out, as Jerry has attested too many times already. <laughs> uh, not, not just me. There's, there's a whole bunch of people out there will attest to that. That's very true, very true. Um, so this has been changed and well, reworked with uh, with the original writer and a whole mm. bunch of new um, people from the Cubicle 7 team as well, and is now available in PDF form and digital, and you can pre-order the physical version of the uh, game book as well, in addition to the companion. So the Emprise in Ruin book that you see above Contains everything from the existing campaign, although obviously things have been nice. che- tweaked and changed. Mm-hmm. It also comes with these really awesome little like grognard books here and there. Mm. Sorry, not books, boxes here boxes, and there within yeah. the book that kind of uh, speak back to the old version of the uh, the campaign and kind of like throw in uh, sort of alternatives for you to you know try out with your role playing group if you've already played this campaign before, yeah. which is really nice. Uh, and then supporting that is also the um, Empire and Ruins. Um, companion as you see there as well which uh, comes with loads and loads and loads of additional details um, think of it almost as the director's cut extra dvds mm. <laughs> <laughs> because this is all the stuff that they couldn't fit into the empires and ruins book nice. that has then been bolted into this companion which gives you loads of additional options for games master to play around with uh, when it comes to running your campaigns and because it fully fleshes out the areas of the old world that this is set in within the empire. Mm-hmm. Um, it also adds loads of additional flavor for continuing campaigns once you've finished uh, the en- enemy within. Or maybe if you're not playing the enemy within, but you want to know more about the region, you pick up these companion books and they mm-hmm. are incredible resources uh, for Thank people you. who want to throw in NPCs and monsters and villains and storylines and hooks and everything uh, within your games. So yeah, very cool. I really want to get sat down with Emmett and get a run through this with you guys. Well, the plans within plans. Uh, yeah, I know, but question is, what would you each play? Well, I'm I, currently I'm playing a dwarven slayer in my with my group, which is pretty uh, awesome, and I ben, do enjoy my. Are we shocked? So. I don't. Ready? You play a dwarf? No way. Apparently uh, so. Shock on. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, also, in addition to what you saw there, there's kind of like the standard versions of the books. There's also these exceedingly lavish. Uh, collector's They're editions gorgeous. Yeah. which come with that lovely furry tarot. leather style finish oh, yeah. tarot art on the front of them uh, they come embossed with silver and everything like that and they have a UV finish to them as well which is quite nice uh, like that. this is the one that well all of these bigger books contain both the core book so Empires in Ruin in this case and also the companion in one tome so you've mm-hmm. almost got this massive bible for you to sit on your shelf <laughs> uh, so if you're a uh, a a lover of the old world, this is something you definitely want to pick up, especially if you maybe played this game way back in the day and you want to try and show off to your friends with the new collection uh, yeah. for the enemy. Look, it's so shiny. I know, and especially if you've got that pretty one. If you've yeah, got a pretty leather-bound one. interested yeah. in the old world, definitely should have a look at these. Uh, like Ben said, there's a wealth, not just for new players, but for people. If you've run through the campaign before, mm. it's not the same campaign. It's yes. very similar. Uh, right. but there are tips 
tricks and tweaks that have been added uh, by the guys at Cubicle 7 to make it not the same. Uh, so yeah. if if you are in a group that's played it through, you'll have little GM notes going, you can do this. You can do yeah. th- this is how you can change it up. So Make this guy the villain instead, and that yeah. kind of thing. So you, you can yeah. go off on one and uh, keep everybody guessing and see yeah. whether or not they survive long enough to get to the end of the campaign. Yeah, mm-hmm. I would also add that we did a, a video interview with Cubicle 7 about uh, it was a, primarily about the book before this, yeah. uh, but we also looked into Empires in Ruin and their whole sort of philosophy about bringing this back to the tabletop. So mm-hmm. definitely go and check that out. It'll be in the links down below. Mm-hmm. Happy days. Mm-hmm. Free. Where are we going to? Oh, we are going to New York City, or technically we're going to Coney Island. So uh, Funko Games over the last year have been taking licenses, which they've got on their Funko Pops. So you guys know Funko Pops, they are everywhere. So what they've been doing with these licenses is they've been adapting to movie titles. They've done this before. We saw The Goonies. We saw Rocket Man as well. And now there's two more games coming next year at the start in February 22 with The Warriors and Jurassic park so the game has been explained as a cooperative experience and players are going to make their way through new york subway system in 1979 journeying in coney island to fight for their innocence so if you haven't seen the movie i really hope you've all seen the movie because none of you are like under 20 many many moons ago yeah um, but if you guys out there um I've seen the Warriors and I was born in 93. So you need to get that masterpiece no. on your list. Yep. You, no excuse. You must do. Um, if you haven't seen it, you'll know the familiar characters and the places that you get to visit in the game. So I like the Goonies. It comes with different miniatures as well that can be painted up and themed if you are keen on painting your stuff. But there is a choice. The artwork is completely themed to the film as well. So you can really experience and allow yourself to feel in theme with the Warriors and gang warfare and whatnot. But as well as the warriors that they've announced, as I said, they're venturing into Isla Nublar as well. So I just, I'm sorry, I really want to sing the Jurassic Park theme tune every single time I say Jurassic Park. Every time. Um, but they're set out to play a campaign. So this is campaign based and it's in the universe itself. So this one wasn't, there wasn't too much announced about this. So I don't know whether that means you're just saying clever girl at some points or, or you know, on the toilet from a T-Rex. I'm not quite sure where this is going. <laughs> but there isn't much announced other than that the experience itself is going to be part of a campaign. So I tend to get a bit concerned when I see movie renditions of board games Mm -hmm. Uh, if these titles take any influence from what they did with the Goonies I'm hoping that they'll have some similarity but I don't know what we've got what could possibly Jurassic Park could bring to the table anything past what we already have with like Dinosaur Island and stuff like that but I'm optimistic and I you know I hope it will um, go for the better so I'm quite I'm I'm very much more keen to see the Warriors out on the tabletop than I am Jurassic Park because I think this is something that we don't necessarily have already it's it's different it's nostalgic whereas yeah. i feel like dinosaurs are churned out i do feel like this year was the year of the dinosaur um, <laughs> Hello. everything do you know what penny. Mm. you know what they could do to take this from being a good idea to being an absolutely amazing what? idea you see the way they're basing it off all the movies mm-hmm. if they had it that each copy of the game came with a digital version of the movie it's based on that's good that's nice well, well, they did in the Radio Times back in the day. Expensive. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, I mean, like, subscribe. It's, it's one of those things on like the Google Play Store. You get your movie off there, and you can just watch it via YouTube. Mm-hmm. So all they do is buy a massive amount of codes, put the code in the box, and then you can play the game, but you can also get the nostalgia of the movie as well and compare if you did as good as the movie. See, what I do worry about with Funko Games predominantly is because they do have all of the Funko Pops, and I mean all of the Funko Pops for everything. I really worry about board games just being made for the sake of we've got this license let's just mm-hmm. build a board game because I see that happen it used to happen like when I was a kid and you used to have a PlayStation game Spider-Man would come out and you get Spider-Man PlayStation yeah. game with it and I feel I'm worried that somebody like Funko Games that has a bank of all of these licenses mm. will just create a game for the sake of it rather than oh yeah that was a good film let's make a game rather mm. than we've got such a and that's why I like the Goonies because the Goonies is an adventure in itself so that works, and I can yeah. see I can see the warriors working. Yeah, it's re- so. it's an interesting one because it's almost a race game, or at least it should be, mm-hmm. because you're trying to get the whole point is you're trying to get home, or in some cases they're trying to get the specific uh, mm-hmm. subway station before mm-hmm. they finish for the night, so they can get back to, to Coney Island or Coney Island or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Um, it's also it's it, it's interesting because it's a modern retelling of Xenophon's March to the Sea. 
uh, from the failed Greek invasion of Persia. All right. Um, because, I, uh, and they said at the time it was, uh, and then when they re-released the film for the anniversary, yeah. it was about 10 years ago, so it was like the 30th anniversary or 20th, well, it must have been 30th. Uh, they included like um, Greek cartoon artwork no. in a comic style to segue between cuts and shots so the the director went back in and put that in to reinforce That's the fact really that cool. it is meant to be the oh. the escape and, and as the greeks fled the the persians after that collapsed invasion they parts of the army just got picked off as they went and that is exactly what you see in the good or in the, goodies, <laughs> in the warriors um <laughs> as they go more and more <laughs> members of the, the party are picked off as as they attempt to get home again so yeah, it'll be an interesting little way of how exactly they managed to do that. And yeah. I think it, it does lend itself to a board game quite nicely, mm-hmm. um, yeah. assuming they don't just mess it up or just completely ignore oh. it. It's- which is which is why I said it concerns me when people say, oh, yeah, it's a campaign game. So mm-hmm. I might as well just watch the film at that point because yeah. that's mm-hmm. the campaign. And I understand having, you know, controlling what's happening. And as I said, do I end up saying clever girl to a, you know, velociraptor or sit on a toilet sure. chasing? Yeah. For- Where does it go? What to, what's the purpose of this campaign? Yeah, Am I, I trying to escape? Actual, Am I- the hook. Mm, to to so, not just be a skin of a, a movie on top of a completely unrelated style of game, I suppose yeah. is the big thing. Yeah. yeah, may also be the fact that they're maybe making the games so that no one else does. Because mm. th- th- this is something <laughs> Games Workshop did years ago when they had the Lord of the Rings license. Mm-hmm. They made sure to support the game and keep doing things for the game so that it wouldn't drop off and someone else would get it and then be doing Lord of the Rings stuff. I have seen, I can't remember who it was. It was a, this week I've seen an announcement from another publisher making a Jurassic Park game. Mm. So it does scare me. It, well, just, the, you know, the, a franchise. The final I've movie is out on the horizon. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. A lot of it will come yeah. down to whoever has the license for whatever specific thing it is and period. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. GW. Yeah. GW didn't make them for the sake of making them. They had the license for X number of years. Mm. And during that time, they were the only ones allowed to do it based on the films. Whereas at the same time, other companies were still producing Mithril stuff doing based on the books. books. Yeah, yeah so. I suppose that that's like what uh, Mantic have with their Walking Dead stuff. It's all based yeah. off the comics, not the based TV show. Actually, yeah. it's, it's just interesting. It's interesting to see mm. where this is going to go. Um, and I'm quite excited. Mm. I'm definitely excited for the Warriors anyway. I'm a, a, in a bit more anticipation about that. Mm-hmm. But staying with Warriors of a sort and around the med-ish. <laughs> Uh, War Games Atlantic have announced a surprise box that had not been listed on the horizon for them no, in any way. Yeah. Mm. They just went, yeah, by the way, we've done this. And this is Italians for World War II. Uh, Interesting. So for people wanting to play um, their games of World War II in 28 mil, there is an Italian infantry box set coming, um, which, like I say, they've, they've been working on for a little while behind the scenes and have said nothing to anyone. Um, exactly, yeah. And it's probably a good way of doing it, mind you. You know, that way they uh, they always keep people guessing as to what's going to be <laughs> springing up. Uh, but the box set itself contains uh, eight sprues, if right. memory serves. So you've got six, no, well, I'm going to say six main sprues uh, that allow you to build 30 infantry models uh, with a variety of head options. So you can build your Alpine trips, your North African, nice. uh, your Ursulary, uh sharpshooters. Um, so you can lend, lay into various parts of the uh, the Italian military because they did fight in various places. The other mm-hmm. two sprues contains uh, an additional command figure and then a heavy uh, machine gun. So you get two heavies, uh, I want to say six light, might be five light, might only be five sprues with six men on it, whatever way it breaks down. Mm-hmm. Uh, two SMGs and then the rest rifles per sprue. So you can make everybody as riflemen if you want. Mm-hmm. You can make everybody as sharpshooters. You can fight in France, Greece, North Africa, Eastern about, Europe, wherever about Spain? you want. Um, I don't believe they went to Spain. Uh, was there not some Italian units sent into the Spanish I whenever they had their civil because, war near the start? Because Spain was Spain was neutral and left alone during the... Um, I thought they had, a, they had a bit of a civil war where some folks went in. I could be wrong. Spain had a civil war, but that was before World War II kicked off. Um, okay. It's just entirely possible the Italians were there. I've never paid much attention to the Spanish civil war. Well, but you, you could play out Italian the Italian civil war. Uh, yeah, the Italian infighting that happened after the, uh, the collapse of their partnership with the Axis. So, yeah, yeah uh, well, that was 43. Um, mm-hmm. They signed the armistice, and then that same year, 
um, Otto Scorsini and the, the Waffen SS did that amazing glider landing yes. uh, to <laughs> rescue Mussolini. And then mm -hmm. for the next year and a half, they continued to fight on. So you had, you could combine the Italians with the uh, partisan box that they've released and have mm -hmm. your uh, loyalist, uh, royalist army. And then your, um, oh, I want to call it, it was the Northern Socialist Army of the Republic or something like that, but mm -hmm. in Italian, which was uh, Mussolini's. <laughs> version but yeah uh, a great looking kit and the fact that it covers all the areas they fought in i mean you can you can fight in the greek island it you is can fight really in Albania, cool, you, can, yeah. you can fight wherever so perfect for uh bold action players or people who uh, want to get dug in with some italian pomp and circumstance mm -hmm. into the second world war great looking little set and mm -hmm. it'll be interesting to see they've they've threatened a few more announcements this week and next week that are going to come out of left field so Nice. To see what else as, comes. as someone on Facebook said very unfairly, they said all those Italians are running the wrong way. <laughs> oh, very hard. Well, I mean, what, what, what was the vehicle they had? The Auto Belinda? It went faster in reverse than forward. Yeah, but so, so did the Archer for the British, and nobody makes fun of that. <laughs> We're being very unfair to the Italians. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Ben, moving away from the realms of historical. What are we going to be looking at now? We're well, we're diving around. into the horrific mm -hmm. uh, because we're looking at some more stuff that came out of Black Sight Studios for Don't Look Back, which is their horror-based co-op skirmish game that is perfect for this time of year. Uh, and weirdly, sticking with an Italian theme, we have Mama Luna's Pizza, which is part of their new Cursed Crate, which combines three expansions to Don't Look Back into one. Uh, the first of these is Mama Luna's Pizza, uh, where you play. Bobby Bobby. <laughs> Bobby Bobby, where you play for the first time as a character that can also play as a monster. Nice. Where the characters will take on the role of Mama Luna, uh, who oh. is also a lycanthrope. And when her pizzeria is threatened, she turns into a beast to try and take on another werewolf that has come into our territory, which is pretty cool. So presumably the one that's not wearing an apron. Yes, yes. <laughs> that, that would be the, the, the obvious pick, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, some very creepy-looking werewolves and lycanthropes for you to play around with there, which is pretty cool. Uh, all of these are 32 millimeter and resin, I should point out, when it comes to miniatures. Um, the second of the expansions that comes in this cursed crate uh, is called Trilogies. Now, uh, games of Don't Look Back uh, are normally played out as single sort of episodes or movies mm -hmm. that you play out on the tabletop. Trilogies links three of those together into a proper horror series which i think Ooh. is awesome wow. uh, and everything that happens in one scenario affects the others later on down the line which i think is very very nice yeah, they've cool. also put a really neat thing in there where it kind of draws on horror tropes mm -hmm. in so much as uh, so for example when you complete your first scenario you then roll dice the police are after me oh my god uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, they, they've heard i'm talking about murder they're on to me <laughs> so Say you complete your first scenario, you then roll dice at the end, depending on what happened, and the um, events of the next scenario will then happen either immediately after it, in kind of like a it's a chase and the hunters after you, the killers mm. after you, or it'll happen twenty years years down the line when your characters return to their city, mm. only to find the killer is still around, which I think is really awesome. So it's like suddenly... a Hellraiser two thing where yeah. it literally <laughs> starts hours after Hellraiser uh -huh. one finishes. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So you got some very cool, cool things isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Or that that small child you rescued in the first scenario is now your main character. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, and so, uh, as included as part of the cursed crate, you also get this miniature, which is the seer, which can be used within those traditional nice. scenarios if you want, which is pretty awesome. Nice. Uh, the third of the additions to the cursed crate, which kind of gives you everything bundled together at a lower price, you also have the environments and twists of fate card deck. Uh, <laughs> so this just throws more random elements into your games that don't look back and means like that, that maybe you find a particular item that allows you to do something extra or fun, or maybe you find some boons or banes that will <laughs> affect your hero or will affect the killer, which is, which is very, very nice indeed. Um, so yeah, some really cool stuff in there on that front. Um, as I say, this is all bundled together as kind of like a, a package deal uh, for Don't Look Back. Um, so if you get this from the folks over at uh, Black Sight Studios, you'll be able to get all of this for a cut down price, which is quite nice. And also, I should point out, they are starting to sell this stuff in the UK. So you don't have to worry too much about shipping costs oh. for a lot of this stuff. Yeah. But make sure you go and check because you'll have to find out where you can get it from. I think they sold through a um, company that helps... Um, Spectre with their stuff in the UK, which is pretty nice. So yeah, sweet. Uh, 
We also have a couple of additional extras. Uh, so we have the paranormal investigators who you could use as your survivors within the game, which is quite nice. Getting uh, all the Annabelle vibes. Yeah, it's very um, oh, conjuring, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yes. Very conjuring. Yes. Uh, as you might imagine from uh, what you've seen so far, they do tend to draw on a lot of very well-known horror movies. And you'll see exa- exactly that when you see Horror Pack D, which is also available. Uh, there's a big old vampire lady, uh, lady there. Um, step on me, daddy. Sorry. <laughs> step on me, mommy. <laughs> uh, you've got some axe, an axe-wielding killer. You've got a, uh, a buzzsaw going on there as well, which is pretty awesome. You've got a Freddy Krueger-esque character there. Rock too. on, not Freddy Krueger is my favourite. Yes. Just, <laughs> I, feel like yeah. I love Jack. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. Some very, very cool stuff in there for people that want to play out interesting scenarios with different looking killers and that kind of thing as well. Oh. You've also got this terrain piece. Uh, so this is Mama Luna's, Luna's not losers, Mama Luna's <laughs> Pizza Parlor, uh, which is a really cool um, MDF kit. Uh, um, comes pre-coloured and you also get the additional things to do in the awnings and stuff which is really nice uh, and if you buy it from the folks at uh, Black Site, you also get the free STL file there as well so you can have a delivery boy that immediately drives away from all of the trouble that's happening and never comes back which would be the smart move I think uh, if I mean, people if people don't do a New York pizza accent while doing this and shout <laughs> bagels at least once highly disappointed uh, that, see I, I just need a David Portnoy miniature <laughs> I have uh, no idea who that is. Uh, he's just a famous guy who does lots of pizza reviews. Oh, well, there oh, you have you never seen that before? No. That's very funny. Uh, just, <laughs> if you look up no, Barstool Pizza. Uh, You're okay. I won't. Um, finishing things off just quickly uh, for the Don't Look Back stuff, we also have just some random thing that would be a lovely gift for someone who's playing Don't Look Back. Uh, you have a measuring gauge that has been designed as a butcher's knife. Uh, so if you wanted to... <laughs> That's so cool. Yeah. So if you wanted to dive in and, and pick one of those up, you definitely can. And it's just something maybe for some people that have maybe played Don't Look Back and have pretty much everything and want something additional. Uh, also, very much safer than using your actual kitchen knives as a measuring tool. True. Oh, yeah, try not to do that. Yeah, that would yeah, be Yeah, bad idea. Although it would put realistic blood effects into the tabletop, which is, uh, <laughs> which is pretty cool. But yeah, you know, it's just something <laughs> quirky and weird. Yeah. I, I just thought it was like a neat little thing that they've done. So Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. I'm a fan. I yeah, am perfect. A fan. No, it's a knife. A knife, not a fan. Uh, perfect <laughs> for, uh, for Halloween gaming, I would say. So make sure to go and check sure. out that back. Next up, delving back to the med and back to history again, actually. Um, Plastic back. Soldier Company has announced that they're going to be doing Achaemenid Persians. Mm-hmm. Uh, so these are obviously for Mortem et Glorium, although you can use them for any game you want, really, uh, when you're getting into the historics. But they look like they're based on the Zeistin um, models. So they've been uh, casting on their license. Um, other companies sort of metal ranges in their ultra cast. So these will be available, I believe, right now. You can order them. Yep, um, pre-order them now, yeah. It gives you enough to start a sort of a pacto set for your games of Mortem et Glorium uh, if you fancy playing out historical battles on the tabletop. Really nice sculpts. Absolutely. Gentleman in the middle there has a fabulous hat. He, he does. They were <laughs> that is a glorious hat. Um, the Achaemenid Persians were a particularly delightful group of people who came out of nowhere and uh, well, showed the Middle East what exactly was going on. I think it's the best way of putting it. Uh, people often talk about Alexander the Great and the size of his empire. Uh, Cyrus pretty much did half of that in 50 years. Um, the wow. Persian Empire was massive. Now, there is already a Persian range available uh, from Plastic Soldier. They do mm. Sassanid Persians. They are almost as close to us as they are to the Achaemenid Persians. <laughs> do not mix those ranges. Um, <laughs> You know, they're, they're like two to 600 AD. These guys were 500 BC. But if you're fans of, of ancient warfare, the likes of the, the Greco-Persian Wars, so Marathon, Thermopylae, uh, Plataea, this would be the Persian force that you should right. be pushing against them. Um, also, they went into North Africa. They rolled over uh, Palestine and uh, Egypt like a steamroller. So, you know, you've got a lot of a lot of stuff going on and you can even push them up against uh, the Greeks and finish them off. Like I was saying earlier, you could finish off Xenophon's merry band as they're, they're plowing into Persia uh, and then send uh, Alexander in to repay the compliment at the end <laughs> because he, he is the one who finished the Achaemenid Persian Empire off. Go. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and then after that, it, it sort of split into the the Tomek and the successors, so sort of Seleucid. But lovely set of miniatures, um, and it's nice to see them coming out once again. Metal spears, because these are the Zeistan ones. They don't come with cast spears. Nice. You have I to would, buy those separately, by the way. I would, I, I would just buy a brush head, uh, mm. personally. You can do an awful lot of spearage with a brush head. Yeah, <laughs> I've got a couple spearage. down there. Uh, a little dusty pan and brush will do mm. you several thousand Oh, there you go. And okay. because they're they're lightweight and plastic, you won't have to worry about them accidentally breaking off um, whenever you're transporting them. Uh, if you're a bit clumsy, oh. like myself, so. <laughs> but leaving the ancient, ancient past and going into the far, far future. That we are. So with kids themselves, they're a publisher that never really used to look at much, and they used to release a lot of miniatures games and and kind of obscure board games here and there. But they've been really catching my eye for the last year, mm-hmm. and they're another one of those publishers that publish out of nostalgia. So they've been bringing these card games featuring some TV characters. We've been to Philadelphia with Will. We've been... You know, everywhere. And now we're going up to deep space uh, and we're exploring the galaxy with Star Trek missions, the card games. So if you've played Fantasy Realms before, Fantasy Realms is creating your own Fantasy Realm uh, building using combo building style. And uh, Star Trek missions uses the exact same mechanic. But instead of building your own Fantasy Realm, you are building your own space crew. So this translover uh, translates over to this upcoming game and this is another one that's going to be coming february 2022 so for quite a while we were seeing like oh everything's going to be out in august everything's going to be out seems like the next one we're going to look for is uh 2022 so if you can't tell by the cover art there's going to be a ton of popular characters like you can see from across all across the franchise so whether it be from next generation or whether it might be Ever your favourite, you can combine all of the particular characters that you love and you cherish very much, along with other crews to build and get combos of the ultimate crew that you want. You can really create some pretty crazy crews to bring <laughs> up with you. So uh, they must attempt to assemble your cards uh, in a way of kind of achieving the highest possible combination you have. So you have different decks, drawing from a galaxy deck, a mission deck, and you'll have your discard area, and your points will value depending on what cards you've got in your hand so you'll be constantly building from it so it does seem really easy to pick up and especially i really like fantasy realms fantasy realms is really one of my i'd say it's up there for one of my favorite card games anyway um having a different skin on this as well is quite a different take because it's still fundamentally the same game Mm. but different output so um it's there's chance for that random aspect as well to keep you know it, you'll keep picking it up you won't find the same crews you always want to build it doesn't seem ridiculously repetitive because you're not going to same up with the same crews so as i said it's out in february 2022 so you are able to get pre-orders in now on the whiskey's website but a uh, really interesting concept and certainly to that i didn't see meeting uh, i didn't see star trek and fantasy worlds becoming a, a thing but i I'm, I'm really keen on this this sounds pretty cool i'm pretty cool. i think it sounds neat yeah i mean because you, you've obviously got lots of different ways of approaching star trek on the tabletop and um i think wasn't it was it gale force nine who did that really awesome star trek game where you went off and you explored the galaxy and all the different mm. quadrants which was really nice but obviously that's a big huge mammoth yeah. star trek game whereas this is a lot quicker and easy to dive into and mm-hmm. it, says, it plays in 20 minutes which is insanely good yeah. um, and i think it'll be fun just sitting around the table with a bunch of Trekkie nerds going, yeah. oh, look at my favourite crow. <laughs> so See, I'm, that's I'm what in- all of us sound like. <laughs> oh, I know. I'm, I'm instantly sitting here wondering, could I just do a completely Vulcan crew? Well, if you could find enough Vulcan it's Star Trek characters, yeah. <laughs> I do, do, do you know what? Games like this, I really feel like my mum. My mum's a massive Trekkie, but she's not much of a tabletop gamer. But she's a massive Trekkie with something as simple... A oh, simple yeah, yeah. kind of mechanic like this, I could quite easily sit down and my mum will get all the enjoyment out of this because she'll be building her own Star Trek crew. Mm-hmm. It's a nice way to get people playing a mechanic of something that works so well in fantasy realms into mm-hmm. a new different audience. And I like that. Yeah, it's it's not overly yeah. taxing. It's essentially top trumps with John Luke Picard's yes. case on it. <laughs> now, if, if you can match a colour and count up, then yeah. that's all you need to be able to play it. And, and that way you can... Uh, sort of get anybody around the table and diving mm-hmm. into it. So yeah, mm-hmm. it's fascinating to see where it goes from there. But I'm moving away from a utopian society, <laughs> a, a brave new future for humanity and going to a grim dark one instead, Ben. Oh yes. Yeah. There's no happiness here. 
only death and war. Uh, no, um, some some people are happy. They're just ignorant. <laughs> no one is happy. No Not one is happy in forty k. <laughs> Not even I, the Tau. Um, so uh, this is the news that Kill Team is going to get its uh, proper star set. Uh, so before this, obviously, we had the box set that was coming out with the Death Corps of Krieg in it and the mm-hmm. old commandos. Uh, this is a sort of like cut down version of that boxed game uh, that comes with exactly the same number of miniatures for each side. So you get nice. the same Death Corps of Krieg and your same orc commandos, as you see there. Um, but instead of uh, that massive, huge orc um, edifice, you instead get the scattered terrain that you see there as well, which is equally pretty cool. I think it's pretty mm-hmm. nice as well. You also get that sort of paper mat that you uh, normally find in a lot of these starter sets, which is quite nice. And you'll also find um, a, a smaller A5 style rulebook for the game um, alongside a sort of getting started guide as well in there as well. So uh, if you didn't pick up the box game or you didn't fancy spending the money on the box game, uh, then you could have picked up, well, you can now pick up, well, pick this up very soon, the starter set, uh, I, I mean, um, to, to start diving into some kill team, which is pretty cool. Um, in addition to the starter set, which is on the way, these were all previewed at Gen Con, I should mention, yeah. uh, which happened last week. Uh, we also had Kill Team Chalmath, which is going to be the next expansion box for Kill Team, uh, which is interesting in of itself. Mm. Uh, but this will contain uh, the Adeptor Sororitas going up against, as you noticed on the box there, some Tau Pathfinders. Uh, both of the different sets get themselves some new miniatures uh, for you to play around with and add into your 40k forces, as well as, of course, using Kill Team. Um, so all of these have been designed around the new rules for Kill Team, so they're very specifically built so that you make you know each of these into specialists and that kind of thing, which is pretty neat, uh, especially if you're diving into the game for the first time, I would imagine. Uh, but yeah, I quite like the Nova Vitiates, uh, Nova Novidiot. <laughs> No vitiate. No vitiate. Nvidia. Which I think are really awesome. I think it's a really nice take on the kind of like battle nuns that obviously we get with the uh, Adeptus Sororitas and the Battle Sisters, uh, and would be a very good match for some Black Templars that are coming up very soon in the news. Uh, speaking of the future, uh, but yeah, some nice stuff there as you can see. Uh, lots of character bits and pieces in there. Uh, lots of cool pieces of equipment as well. It'll be nice to see kind of how modular all of that is. Mm-hmm. Uh, because the initial kill team set was fairly good in that regard. Um, although, of course, there are a lot of people that were like, I'd like to, like to have more specialists hmm. uh, and stuff like that. Well, two points on the sisters uh, after we look at the tower. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, I've got one. Talk, so, yeah, talking about the Tau here, uh, you have a new, newly sculpted Pathfinder team. Like uh, so, this is a verily, very, verily, verily armed <laughs> uh, Tau kill team, as you can see. I clearly can't speak today. Uh, but yeah, it comes with some really nice bits and pieces in there for making almost dynamic vignette style characters. So you've got that Pathfinder there throwing the grenade, which I think is pretty awesome. You've got those of them looking down the sites and that kind of thing. You've got the guy checking his data slate and everything, which is quite cool too. So it's a very dynamic kit that um, sort of approaches the Pathfinders in a different way that we didn't normally see with the existing versions where they were kind of just sort of exemplified by their weapons. Uh, with the sort of like those pulse carbines. But I think what we get here is quite nice because you've got them all with those different style headsets and that kind of thing too. Very much more on that kind of like high sci-fi end of stuff that the Tau have always had, sort of building on that kind of like anime manga um, sort of appeal to the Tau as well. But um, some nice stuff there for, for both sides mm. and those people that want to dive in and pick up each of these. So, yeah. Even their helmets are sad. Even their helmets are sad. Like the one before, the picture you just had, even his helmet has got a little sad. But see, look at top left yeah. corner. <laughs> That's true. It's, yeah. it's a frowny face. face. <laughs> Why have some of them suddenly grown noses? Yeah, this is a good question. He's grown a nose. And he's grown a nose. And the guy in the middle has a nose. I Maybe think for his eyes left. Noses, Evolution. A- you can't so, grow a smile. Because, but because, because these like guys that. here with the face on them like a slapped arse, neither of them have a nose. Although they've got a massive gouge down the middle of the forehead. <laughs> Tau seem to be evolving at a rate of knots. Yeah. Kill them quickly before they get any further along. Uh, what are you going to say about the uh, sisters? Uh, so first off, for the actual armour design, I'm really digging the lighter design of the armour. Seeing them fighting out of you know full-on power armour looks really, really cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And in that second image, I think someone in the design team has went in and done a little rating in the Age of Sigmar because Look at that crossbow bolter. Doesn't that look pretty much almost exactly like the one that the Sigmarines use? It's almost as if they tried to give bolsters to seek to Stormcast Eternals. Oh, wait, ah, they did. And then they <laughs> took them back for the sisters. Yeah. Um, I imagine. Like, no. 
Yeah, much right. of the story is sat around than the Tau attacking a uh, nunnery. Mm, some former shrine. Well, uh, I, I believe from what I was reading of the, the background, the idea is that the um, the Deptus Sororitas are on one of their wars of faith and they are heading through a system uh, only to find out that the Tau have infiltrated one of the plants they thought was cleansed. And so they send down these initiates to go and deal uh, with the problem rather than sending the power armoured versions of their, uh, their battle yeah, sisters. So r- rampaging battle nuns. Exactly. Do I mean this? I mean this in the nicest possible way. The thing that's stopping me from jumping straight into 40k um, is the repeated releases of the same factions or getting into 40k, getting into anything Games Workshop, because I feel that this is the millionth time we've seen Sisters of Battle. (laughs) And it would be really nice to see something else taking front of set. There's not Space Marines or Necrons. I was going to say, at least these ones aren't wearing three-up armour save, unlike the Space Marines and Necrons. So, you know, in that respect, it's slightly different. I mean, it's nice to see the Tau. It's nice to see the Tau. They're getting a bit like, you know. know. Somewhere the the Dark Eldar are going, hello. (laughs) We remember second edition still. I mean, how many different versions of Space Nuns can you do at this point? I do think they're maybe trying to flesh out the Sisters of Battle army a bit more because I think it's the newest one that has came on the scene for the factions of 40k. So they're maybe playing catch up with them to bring them up to the spec of the rest of the ranges. Could be, But Space Marines and Necrons, it's just Space Marines and Necrons. They're just doing that because Space Marines and Necrons. But yeah, just just they're gorgeous. I do like the Sisters of Battle very much, but uh, I just feel like it's uh, once again... We're seeing the sisters battle. Well, you're going to love the next story then. <laughs> yeah. Just just to just to finish off on the the, the Chala stuff. So, um, in addition to having those two new uh, sets of miniatures in it, uh, you also find an additional book that will come with um, more rules and supplementary stuff for you to use in Kill Team, including specific rules for playing around in Imperial ruins and that kind of thing as well. So, they're doing their their similar thing to a lot of their stuff, where there'll be expansion books with more content in them if you want to use them, but. In terms of how Kill Team is set up, but as it is anyway, I think you can more or less get away with just the core book if you really wanted to at the moment, uh, as it stands. So yeah. So what? The, the sisters of battle walk into an imperial shrine, get healed, and she's like, the emperor. I feel better. Let's go. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Stuff like that. Uh, but talking of the emperor making people feel better, uh, mainly with swords and fire, um, yep. the Black Templars are getting a new army set for Warhammer Forty Thousand. Um, so this will follow um, the same kind of release schedule as we saw for the orcs with their big um, set for the beast snaggers uh, but instead of big green skins rampaging around the galaxy we're seeing heavily armored terrible knights templar in space kicking ass with their swords and flamethrowers instead which is equally as awesome i would guess you'd say um, question yes who got out the baking bowl for the haircut? Oh, I thought that. I well, thought exactly the same thing. My mum did that to me when I was five. As, well, in that case, then, you were clearly a neophyte and you didn't know it. Um, so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, the new set um, comes with pretty much everything that you'd want to kind of like start a little tiny Black Templar force. Um, although some people might want to just wait for the combat patrol come, to come out, which will probably have more or less the same stuff in it. But anyway, mm-hmm. if you want to get your Black, black Templars quickly, then this will come with an Emperor's Champion, a new Primaris Marshal. Oh, sorry, all of this is Primaris, by the way. So a Primaris Emperor's Champion, a Primaris uh, High Marshal that you see there on the side, a 10-man Crusader Squad, which is then made up of both normal Battle Brothers and also those Primaris Neophytes that you see within the image there too, uh, with, their, with their bare arms out. How dare they? <laughs> I know. It's like the ankles of a lady. Uh, and then you also have a full kit for the Redemptor Dreadnought at the back there as well, as I've been reliably informed. So uh, you've got all your, your your battle brothers diving into combat to kill things up close and personal, and you can use the uh, Dreadnought to kill things from far away. Yeah, um, that, that Dreadnought's clearly getting the Plasma Annihilator put on there. So uh, the Marshal, as you see there, um, taking some, some cues from Helbrecht. Sneaky, mm. sneaky. Uh, yeah. But uh, it can, comes with a, a range of different weapon options, uh, not presented here in these images. And you also get uh, either that unhelmeted version of him or a helmeted version. You also have that very funky looking skeleton on his backpack, just looking over his shoulder, going, Hey, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Whisper, whispering clearly uh, the, the prayers of the emperor into his ears. And nothing no. fouler, of course. No, he, he's, he's just <laughs> hanging out there going, hey, 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 Marshall, hey, Marshall, hey, you're over there. Yeah. I'm hey, going to name, 
Yeah. I'm, I'm going to name him Murray uh, <laughs> and pretend that uh, he's he's come from an island somewhere. He did uh, look very Mushu like. <laughs> Uh, we also have, as you can see here, the Crusader Squad itself, which comes with a whole bunch of different options in it. I mm -hmm. would imagine a lot of this stuff is going to be push fit, as it tends to be. Um, you also get the Sword Brother there at the start, at the front, uh, who can lead the squad into battle, which is pretty awesome as well. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering what the, the stat line is going to be like on that new Flamer style. I don't think uh, I've seen that before. I would imagine it's going to be flamey, flamey, burny, burny. And those yes. are the exact rules burgy, burgy. on the data card. Um, I quite <laughs> like the, the Primaris Neophytes. I've always quite liked Neophytes. Uh, the only thing I don't like about them is the large shoulder pads that they have. I wish yeah. that they had smaller style shoulder pads, a little bit like traditional Space Marine Scouts. I think that would probably work a little bit better with them, especially because most of their rest of their armor is quite pared down as well. Mm. Um, oh, but, from the look of it, you might be able just to leave those off. I'm, I'm, I'm crossing my fingers and hoping I can. Be, not that I'm going to buy these. No, Ben, don't buy them. <laughs> <laughs> buy them, Ben. Yeah. Buy yeah. them. I'm definitely not buying this set, though. Uh, but in addition to the actual miniatures that you see there, you also get a limited edition uh, version of the Codex, which comes nice. with a piece of artwork from John Blanche on the front of it, uh, which mm -hmm. is kind of like the iconic version of the, of the Black Templars from back in the day. And you also get a set of the data cards as well. Um, I would imagine this is probably going to come in around the same price as the uh, the Beast Snagger box, which was around sort of 120 quid, something like that. Um, so if you're interested in this, watch out for that. It's going to be coming very, very soon. Um, it was revealed at Gen Con, but these kind of things tend to pop up maybe a month or so after they get revealed at these kind of things. So watch mm -hmm. out for that. Uh, um, I'm, I'm going to have to go and listen to Hell's Reach again. <laughs> I know John is uh, very eager to paint Black Templars, I think, from, from what you're saying. Last oh, yeah. It's yeah, been yeah. Months since he's painted some. <laughs> Uh, we also uh, have a little bit of a little bit more uh, additional mm. news when it comes to uh, Black Templars. More? <laughs> you want more, Neophyte boy? Um, so, so yeah. Please, sir. Uh, I want some more jeans, Sid. <laughs> oh, that's horrible, Justin. Uh, uh, so, <laughs> Wait, no, that's chaos. Sorry. <laughs> we have um, High Marshal Helbrecht was also mm. shown off for the Black Templars. Mirrored again off an old piece of artwork from uh, Codexes of Yore. Um, mm. He's shown here with two of his attendants who are cleaning his power sword and oh, preparing uh, his weapon for use in combat. Um, I, I think he just needs help. He looks distraught. His face ah. looks distraught. He just needs a hand getting the I sword out. I saw this stuck, and... my attendant. <laughs> he did. Dragon he's from he's the orc <laughs> corpse for me. I have See, a big I... sword. He's got chains in on everything. Yeah. You know? uh, There's I, a stunning I, I... piece of art by Mark Gibbons as well. Hmm. I, I just like that there's someone there cleaning his sword. It doesn't feel right. That should not be cleaned until the end of the battle, and that blood should How not be red. Know? How do we know that? And that's not the end of the battle. Could it, oh, yeah. He's killed the orc. You're he's right. The orc. He's, he's taking a break. <laughs> well, regardless, that, that blood should not be red. It, it shouldn't be, but it's always been red on GW artwork because it contrasts yeah. better than green blood. Mm. Uh, uh, but yeah, so uh, a pretty impressive looking model, as you can see there. And as, mm. as Jerry was saying, based on a very nice piece of artwork as well. Mm. Um, the, um, the actual version of this miniature comes with either the unhelmeted option, once again, uh, or you can uh, plug two different styles of helmet onto his head. So you can have the one with the cross there, uh, but I'm very interested to see what the other version of that is. Uh, maybe I quite like that helmet. That, maybe it's going to be one that kind of like, has got like a flipped up version of it or something. That nice, yeah. I have a sneaking suspicion it will be a more traditional Space Marine style helmet. That mm. could also be true. Yeah. Whereas yeah. that one's got more uh, medieval. Templar Knight, yeah. yeah. But um, yeah. yeah, a pretty it impressive looking gorgeous. miniature, especially if you're, looking to put together a Black Templar's force and uh, were eager to see what they were doing with the rest of their characters. Because obviously, Helbrecht has also crossed the Rubicon Primaris to um, join the rest of his battle brothers. Mm -hmm. uh, I also quite like the fact that he's got the Orc on the base as well, because the Black Templars, uh, at least from what I remember anyway, the fluff have been hunting down Orcs for many, many years now, mm -hmm. uh, alongside Yarrick and stuff. Um, so yeah, some very good cool stuff there. Um, so with the orcs coming out and now these becoming available, you've got um, all the things you need for a grudge match. Mm. Talking of orcs, we'll just quickly run through some more of the releases that are coming up for the beast snaggers. Um, so uh, these will be previewed um, before this, uh, but we have Mozrog Scragbad that you oh, see I there, who is the big named character. On a great white squig. Yeah. I wonder if they painted his uh, tattoo on. If, or I if it was they, part of the mint, the model. I that think they have painted on. that on. 
Because, that looks awesome. Mm, yeah. Whatever you say about Games Workshop paint schemes, I think their heavy metal team do some very nice detail work. <laughs> I think it's very cool. And I also like the fact that they've painted that big squig with almost like a shark quality to it, which yeah. is quite nice. Mm-hmm. Obviously, it would be more sense if it was a whale, but anyway. But, but yeah, yeah. very, very nice indeed. Yeah. Uh, Although and, it's, it's nice that it has some bionics in there too. Yeah, yeah. Well, one of the big things about the the the, the beast slangers is that they actually do a lot of bionic work because they end up having a lot of their sort of bits and pieces ripped off them by the things they hunt. So mm-hmm. they love bionics, which I think is a really nice little touch. And that's obviously gone on to their squigs and their mount as well. I should point out this that thing and also this beast boss on Squigsaw are freaking huge. Are they? Um, they showed uh, like a preview image of one of these. These are like two orcs high, and that's what I mean, like an, a new. Fancy beast. Uh, wow. Orc. So well, these, this is on like a 60 mil base. Yeah. So these are monstrous things, uh, which makes sense because they are monstrous creatures. So there you go. Um, uh, in addition to both of the, um, well, the main character and the, the beast boss that you see there, we also got a new character with the pain boss. Um, so a, a funky oh. character for miniature once again that I thought was really nice, who even comes with his little wheel bound grot servant which is i <laughs> love that grot servant mm-hmm. uh, i think he's probably cooler than the pain boss in many See, ways. i'm i'm loving the fact that he's actually just carrying bionic bits in his backpack he's yeah. got a spare yeah. hand there just in case yeah. and he's turned or, squeak into drips and stuff as well which i think is quite nice <laughs> yeah or is yeah. that hand for when he's not operating and he just swaps them out maybe <laughs> maybe true yeah yeah uh, but I think it's really nice and obviously shows off a little bit of the beast snaggers, uh, but could obviously be tweaked and, and, and changed if you wanted it to fit into a traditional uh, orc clan as well, if you wanted as well. Yeah. Look, there's a cool thing. He's actually turned the fangs on the, the beast's head into syringes. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. Yeah. So, you know, Yay! stick those into somebody and then start cutting them up. They can't feel any pain. It's great. <laughs> Five plus ward save. Uh, yeah. <laughs> We finish things off um, in vulnerable safe, sorry, in 40k, because uh, someone will probably comment on that. Uh, we also have uh, the kill rig with that is that massive vehicle that we saw previous oh, to this. Yeah. This can be built in a different configuration as well, uh, but this is both a rig that they used to go hunting, very Mad Max style, uh, with another massive squig on the front of it. Uh, but this one is also used in a little bit of a shrine for their psychic energies as well. So you've got a, a boy on the back channeling the powers of the warp to go and blast someone to pieces, no doubt as well. Um, as is the case with a lot of big games workshop vehicles for one of 40,000, I bet it does buckets and buckets of damage. Uh, so, yeah, very cool. <laughs> I love the post apocalyptic style to these. I really like nice. that. Yeah, yeah, you could do some yeah. really nice Mad Maxian things with this kind of stuff. Mm. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, you can imagine one of the rest of the crew turning to the driver going, Oi, the weird boy says the beast is over that way. <laughs> Imagine a weird boy just picking the entire rig up and spinning it in the direction he wants. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, more, no more drive for you. Well, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, moving on from Warhammer 40,000, we have a little bit of additional information from Gen Con to the world of Warhammer Age of Sigma. Mm-hmm. Um, their um, neat little skirmish game that also includes deck building elements called Warhammer Underworlds is getting a new season, and that new season is called Warhammer Underworlds. Harrow Deep. Um, so this new season of the game uh, takes things away from the realm of Gur and instead takes things to the realm of Shadow in Ulgu, uh, where you're going to be taking on the role of either the Thunderstrike Stormcast Eternals, Zandia's Truth Seekers, or Da Cunning Crew, who are the Oryx from the Cruel Boys that you see there as well in this, in this trailer. Um, They are fighting through an underwater labyrinth where many treasures dwell in the darkness of shadows, as would make sense in Old Goo. Uh, And uh, again, this is another one of their sort of like competitive skirmish games that you sort of build your decks and you play out with another opponent 1v1. Um, It'll be cool to see what else they do for this because I really like seeing all the different character form miniatures they bring out for Warhammer Underworlds. I think Underworlds is probably the, I'd say it's the best way to explore the mortal realms on a budget because you get a really nice flavor of a particular faction. In this case, for example, the Stormcast Eternals there in that new Thunderstrike armor uh, without having to go and buy a massive army. And the, those four miniatures are entirely playable within the game that you're sitting down to to play, which I think is really, really good. Hmm. Um, And yeah, I think each of these boxes normally retails around like 15, 20 quid, which is pretty insane. And the starter box is around 40 quid, something like that. So, it's a very nice sort of like entry point to Age of Sigma that allows you to try lots of different factions and also play around with a, a really neat 
and tight set of mechanics that they've sort of perfected mm-hmm. for Warhammer Underworlds. Um, I know a lot of people really enjoy playing these, be it competitively or, or casually, which is really cool. Uh, and also, it should be pointed out, if you look at the bottom left of that miniature, that's another Hobgrot, which is basically a Hobgoblin, which kind of confirms that Chaos Dwarves are on the way. So watch out for that. <laughs> uh, I've, I've got to say, I'm not sure I like this Orc and Goblin crew, the, the aesthetic is just not I gelling like with things. me. I, I love them. Uh, I think they I look, like cr- I think they look uh, quirky and weird and awesome. Uh, <laughs> not, not, not for me. There's, there's just something in there that's just making my soul cringe and go, mm, don't like that. Well, don't worry, because you could always go and buy one of the normal Orc crews if you wanted to. Yeah. As well, which I know, be. I know. Uh, I should also say that they've uh, talked about um, changing things up in terms of the um, kind of like the way they deliver the cards. Mm-hmm. So uh, previously with these, you'd have two decks that were effectively made just to kind of get you started in the game. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then you had a whole bunch of extra cards that you'd use for deck building. Yep. The deck building element of the game isn't going away. That will still stay and they'll st- stay and there'll still be this champions format for um, competitive play within tournaments and that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. But they've also designed what are called rivals decks. And so these rival decks have been made so that they are good to get you going in the game, but also they are competitive. So they've been, I would assume, tested so that they work against all the other decks out there so that you're not diving in and playing with your starter deck that is probably crap uh but in actual fact they've tested these to make sure they work which fingers crossed they have um but yeah so if you're diving into play the game and you don't really care about doing any deck building whatsoever as is the case with a lot of these starter games uh it's good to have some options there for people to just dive in and just start playing which is mm-hmm. sweet. Plus, like the fact it's bird heavy both factions get a bird. Yeah. I know. I noticed that as well. Birds like, under the sea in a round of the shadows. Sea, the best place to, <laughs> when you're wanting to deploy a wind thing, have it underwater. Exactly. Well, it, it, it was bring your pet to work day. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, so. I, I mean, I like, I love the idea of Warhammer, uh, Warhammer Underworld anyway. This is something I looked at and this is something that I was going to get into just to kind of pull me into Age of Sigmar anyway, start to become more familiar. But the reason why I didn't give it a go was because a lot of people did have problems with the previous edition. And I know that a lot of people did shy me away from it and say, mm, something bigger is coming, something's better. And this might be a good way for people like me, for example, who haven't immersed ourselves into any um, Games Workshop mm. title. And it's a good way to become familiar with yeah, uh, yeah. the characters and things like that. So it might be a good one for me or any board and card gamers who want yeah. to get involved. As, as I say, look, low, low model count, very easy and simple to play rules. Games play in 15 to 20 minutes. There's yeah. lots of different factions for you to choose from now as well. And there's a huge, well, the, the, this game's been around for what, two or three years at this point. So, you know, they've hopefully refined a lot of those mechanics that people were a little bit annoyed with to begin with. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I really enjoyed playing this when it first came out. I think it's, I think it's a lot of good, it's a good bit of fun. And there's some really nice tactical decision-making that you have to do within 20 minutes, which I think is, which, which pairs down the normal Games Workshop experience of it being like a three-hour game with 2,000 points per side. Uh, so I think they've really done a good job with this and uh, it's a nice window into Age of Sigma, as we were saying. Uh, no, the big thing for me is you're just not getting flooded with the amount of information or miniatures or work you're going to have. Oh, to yeah. Do. yeah, exactly. There we go. That wraps us up for another week of news then. Mm. Uh, we're going to take a quick swish and when we come back, we'll be taking a look at the world of 3D printing. All right, then. So we're back and we're going to be diving into some 3D printing for yeah. the Shiznay. And this time we're going to be taking a look at cast mm play, like salt mm pepper. <laughs> or salt mm shake. Yes. Could be, that <laughs> uh, so what's the crack with this gentleman then, Ben? Uh, so cast and play has been around for a little while. Um, obviously has very different mediums in order to share a lot of their work, but uh, they have a My Mini Factory that is packed with all sorts of interesting bits and pieces. Uh, and they cover a wide range of different genres as well. So you've got your know, loads of sci-fi stuff in there, alongside some horror horror pieces. And they also have lots of, uh, of pieces of terrain as well. Um, as is the case with a lot of the stuff that we see from uh, these um, sort of like collections, mm-hmm. uh, they tend to work on kind of like a monthly basis not normally through their patrons and that kind of thing in order to produce uh, a selection of very themed um, elements for use on the tabletop, which I think is quite nice. Um, 
so yeah, they, they do a wide range of different stuff that has a very heroic and often cartoony feel to it. Mm. Um, so if you like the kind of aesthetics of uh, very similar to things like um, Legends of Signum and that kind of thing as well, then you've got lots of stuff in here that is very along those lines, which I think is quite nice uh, to sort of like build up interesting and quirky collections of miniatures to mm-hmm. print off at home. So That is exactly how I look when one of my imp demon bats is sitting on my skull. I'm my hair out. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> I capture it perfect, Jerry. We captured yeah, it. Yeah. 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 There's a lot less grey in going. that render, which is I'm thankful for. So well done, man. Yeah, he's just suddenly going, ah, oh, my minion, thank you for the gift. <laughs> Very much so. Very much so. Um, but going yeah. since 2018 then, let's... Mm-hmm. I, I'm going to reverse the flow for once. Oh. See where they started and then uh, and then move into some of the more recent things. Yes. I really want to see the caravan set. I saw a rhino with a caravan at some point. A collection yeah. of animal tokens is. That's yes. beautiful. <laughs> yeah. That's really cute. It I like cute. that. I like the fact it's also stackable. So mm. you can have your totem pole or you can break it down. So you could use them as as totems in game or as a terrain piece or objective markers, that yeah. kind of thing. Yeah, which is quite nice. Oh, that I love that. They'd be they'd be beautiful to paint. Mm. Look, See, I like, the old days when they use that FDM thing. I like how the um the texture of it's come out on the 3D printing because it makes it look more wood like. Mm-hmm. That is true. That is a benefit of, of having the lines. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I would do a scenario for this where you have teams of miniatures running to collect the components of the totem to run back to their area, Relay, build yeah. the totem, and then you can oh, fight cool. each other in between. Like yeah. a like a one of those MOBA things, like you could play. <laughs> Oh, I like that. That's beautiful, isn't it? That is quite cute. Mm-hmm. And there's, look, resin. We're just moving into the future. <laughs> into the future. There's a ridiculous amount of detail around the um, the harness and, and yoking mm-hmm. system at the front, which I wouldn't expect to see. Mm-hmm. Although it is, is required if you want to hitch anything up to it, mind you. So yeah. well done there. You know, you, you can just basically put this on your table and say, yeah, there was an adventuring party. They're not there anymore. This is our stuff now. Yeah, yeah it does look like a murder hobo's wagon, doesn't it? It does. <laughs> Moving from town to town. Where did you yeah. get all those weapons from? Well. Well, that last image you just saw, it looked, looked like somebody was rolled up a body-wise. So it could be. <laughs> it could, well, there yeah, you go. The yeah, back, it could yeah, well be, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> we've, you know, we've murdered our way through towns, <laughs> villages, and taken all their stuff. Yeah, maybe maybe it's it. like a trader's banner, you know. Mm. You know, Murder Hobo Inks, Wondrous Wares. Yes. Why are all your wares covered in blood? Uh, <laughs> it's a, it's Authentic. a patina. patina. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a way to go, certainly. I would recommend having a look at the Mount Magna stuff. Uh, yes. I think he's very cool. And the Demon Terrain, that's a, a one up as well. They've done some really nice bits and pieces of terrain, which are very cool. Depths uh, of but, Hell, that one. Yes, that's the one. Yeah. Uh, since we're here, I'll also have a look at the ship because. Because, yeah. Because, yeah. Uh, oh. so, yeah. Oh. That's boat. Oh, that's they're, they're, they've done some nice. really nice bits and pieces that are really good for people who are trying to put together in like dynamic dungeons, which I think mm-hmm. is really cool. Because uh, you don't, well, you don't tend to often see people model traps into stuff. You tend no. to get the dungeon. You tend to get the tiles, and then someone puts a big black space where the pit was. Whereas with these kind of things, you can in, you can bolt them onto a lot of stuff they've already done, as you can see here with their dungeon tiles and stuff, mm-hmm. in order to create really nice dynamic looking settings. And yet this means that you get that kind of look and feel of something like a Dwarven Forge table without having to pay Dwarven Forge prices, <laughs> mm. basically, yeah. which, is, yeah. which is cool. So. See, I, I do like to think that bubbling pit is just a slime that's just taking a nap in the dungeon. Yeah. Oh, very much <laughs> so. It could be. I quite, weirdly, the rift trap, the fact that it's, it's supported so that when you build your dungeon, Mm. And you can have it swinging over the top. You just set it on the top. Yeah. That's nice. It's actually swinging down into it. Well, yeah. well. And I like pivot, the way they've designed it, the as if the the beam on the top's got that curve to it, as if it's so heavy, it's just holding on. Yeah, the the weight in there is just pulling it down. Mm-hmm. And obviously, down here for your Indiana Jones games, a pendant mm-hmm. man may pass. Exactly. Well, I put it to you: if you kneel down, the bottom two will get you. So <laughs> potentially not a pendant man. Will they they pass, saw Indiana they? Jones coming. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, the thing is, it's, it's easy to get out of. Just walk on top, and then go get you. <laughs> What's that? The Maze Runner? Is that it? 
when I just climb to the top and walk your way out. Um, yeah. You know, there's yeah. no way we can get up there. Everything's covered in vines. Yeah, we can't get up there. <laughs> yeah. Are you, even, are you even trying to get out of this maze? They're really nice. They'd be good for rain in hell, wouldn't they? I yeah, like exactly. these. Uh, even as like the end of a dungeon where a necromancer has been set up. Mm. Oh, it screams boss battle, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. it does. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, you have to my lair. Yeah. Yeah. Just really lean into the uh, the yeah. demonic hellspawn yeah. of everything. Yeah. yeah, and you've got some totally, I swear to God, not cursed swords. <laughs> the blade of incineration. That ship. Oh, nice. that's a nice ghost ship. Mm-hmm. Interestingly, it comes with a full hull as well. Yeah, full keel. No. Yeah, the keel on it as well. It's because it floats. It don't need no I hope so. <laughs> yeah. I, wow. imagine, I, wonder if it, I wonder if it comes with the waterline version as well. Probably doesn't. Well, actually. look at the, the components. You just don't build the keel onto it. Yeah. One, uh, two, yeah. one three, five, and seven. Just take don't, those off. Don't print. Yeah. yeah. And you're fine. You're sitting at the waterline then. And, mm-hmm. and uh, I was going to say Jack Black, but it's not Jack Black. It's Jack something, isn't it? <laughs> Jack Sparrow. Jack Sparrow. <laughs> oh, another bird reference. <laughs> there we go. Jack Sparrow is the whole way. Oh, yeah. Jack Black! It, Jack Black would look awesome in that. We can still do that. <laughs> I, again, they are doing Brutal Legend too. Yeah, there you go. So maybe him on the front of a pirate ship, just yes. throwing up the horns. Yes. I discovered the other day there's a Jack Gray. Jack Gray, which is Jack Black and Jack White from the White Stripes, comboed together as a group to record a couple of songs um, and call yeah, Jack child. Gray. <laughs> That's very cool. That's very I was cool. just going to ask if he's slightly more bland, being grey and whatnot. But yeah. <laughs> yes, we got in here. Uh, Crossland looks interesting. Who? I can see a lot of mounts as well. The mounts look nice. Mm-hmm. Right. I'll have a look at kobolds because I love my dog face bastards. Mm. <laughs> uh, but I'll also open the mythical oh. clash. Yeah. Uh, just uh, to have a go... look. Oh, no, right. Wow. Kobold. You're not that is a tender. fine collection of kobolds. Mm. The 50 quid, well, 50 dollars. That's amazing. Mm hmm. And as soon as you own the STLs, you can print as many as you wish. Yep. Not not sure why that's up twice. They're similar, but not quite the same. (laughs) You say that, I think they are exactly exactly the same. Oh, they're different. (laughs) Just a slightly different tone of grey. I am a fan of kobolds. see if we can get a better picture. No, they're cool. That's that's somebody different. We'll have to come back to Goon Master. We'll have to come back to Goon Master. Goon Master. (laughs) Face yourself, we're coming. Someday, someday. But yeah, kobolds are great. These look more like dragonkin. Some of them look particularly big. They do. Because kobolds, in many respects, shouldn't be on anything larger than a 10 mil base because they should be tiny little rat gets coming in, stealing your stuff in the way. I, 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 I can fix that. It's an STL. You just downsize it. Yeah, they look but, quite you know, menacing for coal bolts. Exactly, um, yeah. They're, they're not menacing. They should be, um, if you look at them funny or shine a light on them, they should be away like whippets. <laughs> <laughs> like gnomes. That's really cool. That's oh, amazing. I it's love like that. A, a clockwork. Um, yeah, Mecha Pegasus. Griffin. Or Mecha, yeah. That's, That's beautiful. That is different. Yeah. Um, and I like the fact you've got multiple wing poses. Yeah. Flappy or furled. Mm-hmm. Oh, it looks like say, something that belongs in the Horizon Zero yeah. Dawn universe. Yeah. Oh, yeah. As I say, oh, I imagine if you could get flying mounts in that game. Oh, just just plow on through while they talk about Horizon Zero Dawn. We can <laughs> cut their streams out. They're on completely different channels. Uh, I was going to say, one of the nice things, well, as I say, is that it's got this almost like cartoon feel to it. Mm. Yes, so they, I love that aesthetic. They've gone for that almost larger than life appeal to the miniatures, which I think is quite nice and sets them apart with a lot of other stuff that's out there. Um, but it's not so different that it would look out of place next to, for example, like uh, you know the the deep cuts or the mm. Nolzers miniatures from from D and D official stuff, which I think is quite good. Um, and then that means that you can play around with some really nice stuff when it comes to dungeon delving and and yep. not feel like you've got very disparate. Elements of your collection yeah. on the tabletop, which is which is always nice. They're quite yeah. Warcrafty as well. Yes, that yeah. cartoon um, feel, you know. And is this guy just on my mini factory, or does he have his Patreon up and running too? Uh, he does have a Patreon, uh, but <gasps> as things are in the world, that may be moving on to a different platform in the future. Ah, uh, yes. Okay. Uh, so we're not going to look at it yet, just in case it doesn't exist when this <laughs> when this comes yeah, out, well. <laughs> or when, <laughs> when you're viewing this. Yeah. Uh, in the grand scheme of things, he is on Patreon as patreon.com slash cast play 
However, <laughs> he has signed up to the tribe, which is yes. my mini factory's own version of right. Patreon. Uh, so it's yes. a, their own subscription thing. Gotcha. Uh, so at the moment, he's on both. Whether mm-hmm. he maintains a presence on Patreon, yeah, in the uh, in the near future is another matter. Um, but you know that it's definitely there to try because that's where everything's supported when it yeah. comes to my manufacturer, which is yeah. which yeah. is good. So. And the nice thing is he has that merchant uh, level as well. So if you don't own a 3D printer, there are people out there making and selling these miniatures. Yeah. Fantastic. Here's hoping. But yeah, so there's some a whole of the, world in there. Yeah, so just quickly, one of the nice things is that there's loads and loads of that fantasy stuff in there, hmm. but they've also done some sci-fi bits and pieces as well, nice. which is always nice to see. As I said, it crosses a couple of different genres. So if you want to play around with some really badass-looking powered warriors and all that kind of things, you can definitely do that. Build some terrain uh, like this as well. Oh, Jerry, be still my beating heart. It's perfect for dead zone. Mm-hmm. Got all those lovely panels that you can Our use to make lovely cube-based combat. Yeah, but I'd, I'd much rather play a game that worked. That's our name? The levels of harshness from Jerry just it's not really. I mean, if you, play, if you want to play Necromunda, I have the original one up there that doesn't yeah, require yeah. 15 separate books to be able to climb a set of stairs. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. The, um, what's the Ancient Sands? Where this is the Ancient Sands? So that's the thing. Oh, that one. Do you think you're on the thing? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's a lot of their stuff that I think was more one of their more recent Patreon offerings that has now obviously migrated over to their store yeah. for you to pick up as individuals uh and so as i say it's got that theme to it so this one was obviously the kind of themed around the idea of like ancient you know desert kingdoms and that kind of thing which is really nice Beautiful. and so it's setting up things like mines and and you know treasure hordes and all sorts of different things for you to go and delve into which is which is really cool that um, looks like a cobalt camp <laughs> yeah it probably he has yeah. he has this on his patreon which I can't see on the My Mini Factory, but it's the Sands of Ethics, mm-hmm. which is a, an adventure essentially for the, the Ancient Sands right. uh, for 5th edition. So ah, cool. So That's it's not brilliant. just Tiny Fighting Men, but also Tiny Fighting Book. So you can download the miniatures, play through sure the adventure that. at the same time. Yeah. So. Right, I do. I have to say that's a bit of a stunner. I quite like it. There's a whole host of things in there, up to and including an adventure to play through. So if you're interested, check out myminifactory.com users mm-hmm. cast play or Patreon slash cast play. We'll as long as it's around. <laughs> that's a mm, not an mm. no. that's a not mm. <laughs> Did you win one of our prizes? Find out on our prize claim center over at ontabletop.com. Here we list all our previous prizes and those who have won. If you see your username, fill out the form to claim your prize. All prizes must be claimed within 30 days. But moving away from the world of 3D printing <laughs> and into actual hard physical objects. And real things. Real ones. Real things at our Kickstarters. Uh, so first off this week, we have got Myth Goal. <laughs> It might be. You don't know. You can't tell me. It's going to be a run goal. Yeah. <laughs> Which is the fantasy football game designed by Needy Cat for Blacklist. Yeah. Uh, so I was lucky enough to sit down with James mm, Hewitt and have a chat with him about this um, about a month ago when they were still going through the previews. But essentially it is a, a new take on fantasy football. Mm-hmm. Um, Blacklist up until this year had mostly been working on miniatures uh, that were agnostic and could be used for a lot of different games. And then they decided to start supplementing it with actual games as well. So while these miniatures could be used for Blood Bowl or other fantasy football games that exist, they decided why not actually have a game to go with it. Uh, so the, the main pledge with the miniatures gives you a full game and four full Blood Bowl teams, which means you have eight full Myth and Gold teams for $109 by Grabthor's Hammer. What a savings. Uh, <laughs> essentially, you're buying four teams and you're getting a game for free. And the game changes up the sort of the standard um, fantasy football style game in that a lot of games exist currently, Blood Bowl, Blitz Bowl, Red Bull, things like that, where it's about the miniatures you have on the tabletop and then how you use them on the tabletop. Myth and Goal adds another level to that because you are meant to be coaches. They always talk about the fact that you're a coach. Uh, and in this, 
when you're building your team and deciding on your formations and your play style, that's actually baked into the team you play. So you can play your Dwarven Warband or your Human uh, Warband or team on the tabletop, but you can play them different ways. So you can have a very stoic, stout, doughty elven team who can take a lot of punishment uh, without having to worry too much about fatigue or you can play a very nimble quick fast scoring glass hammer style elven team uh, and i like that i like the fact that tactics and resource management has been pulled into a fantasy yeah. football game mm -hmm. because generally you just you don't really see an elf team as an elf team as an elf team uh, a you know a robot team for dreadball is going to be more or less the same every time you play it with yep. chromium chargers a um i was gonna say ratkin but they're not racking a skaven blood bowl team are all about the speeds and and the the goals but here you can tailor it to your play style and you can take the same team and play it in different ways so your opponent might yep. get used to you playing a very brutal uh orc team that can dish out a lot of punishment and then the next week you show up you may have decided to draft a couple of elf players or uh, goblin players or whatever happens to be into the team to change how it plays but also change the play style that you're you're supplementing the team with and it gives you a very different idea of how it, it comes together then it's um, versatile it's not st i feel like with uh, the likes of blood bowl and dread bowl you're very hmm. locked into your team yeah this but doesn't of, lock you whatsoever hmm. One of the huge things for me is whenever people hear fantasy football, they're instantly thinking an analog of American football. Yeah. The gameplay in this, from what I was hearing from what James was saying during your interview, is very, very different. It's a lot more free flowing. Yes. You know, so if if you're a fan of something like Dreadball, there's some light similarities to yeah. that, just with the, the game, speed of play yeah. and the continuation of play. Yeah, the, and I like that a lot more than just doing here is another version of American football where you actually get to deliberately punch each other in the face. Yeah. Yeah. The game's been designed so that like it doesn't stop in that regard, a little bit like Dreadball. So you score a goal or, you, or a touchdown or whatever, and then the game keeps playing. So you have to keep thinking about both your attacking presence on the pitch, but also your defensive one. And one of, one of the nice things that Jerry was talking about was the idea that, you know, you tailor your team for a particular opponent each time you come down to play. So you have that collection of players. Mm. But then within that, you then choose who's going to then take to the pitch. So, mm. you know, you know, like how in Blood Bowl or whatever, you, you tend to have like, well, these are the guys that I've spent all my experience on. Yeah. Whatever. Mm. Obviously, you're going to have kind of like league elements built into this as well as, as, they, as they've built into the game. But mm. you're like, ah, okay, this time I'm going against these guys. I'll bring these particular players from my deck of, you know, characters and use them mm. instead, which I think is really nice. And then that tactics deck is a really cool sort of addition to the game, I think, mm. to kind of add a little bit more of that kind of board game -y element to things, yeah. where yeah, it moves away from it just being a, a miniatures-based board game and more towards a board game itself, which is cool. Yeah, although there's also less of that just setting up a scrum line and trying to batter a gap through to get yes. the, yeah. the ball to the end. And yeah. also the fact that whenever you get your characters into that scoring zone, they do get teleported out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they end so, up sitting on your subs bench, and you have to yes. draft them yeah. back or well, pull them back, in, them back which out, takes, yeah. takes time. Yeah. So you can't leave yourself open. You, yeah, yeah you can score. You can't but, just break in and hold the the yeah. opponent's scoring zone. Yeah, the other yeah. thing was quite nice that I liked is the way you were talking about action economy and stuff. Hmm. Because, for example, in things like Blood Bowl, you have that thing where a player acts, they're done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Whereas in this, you can keep pushing that player and keep putting activation tokens on them right. up to their fatigue limit. So you can like, if that if that elf really needs to get into the end zone this turn, you can push them, but they're going to be completely out of puff yeah. and basically useless for the rest of the game if you do that kind of thing, which I think is really nice. Yeah. And builds into that coaching mentality that you were saying about the game, which I think is really cool. So yeah. Although here's something nice. In those little gifts we were seeing, you don't have a teeny weeny itty bitty itty bitty tiny tiny I can barely pick this up football. <laughs> you have a nice token that you slot into oh, the side of your base. It's, nice. it's such a small sort of thing to have, but it, <laughs> it, it just, it's a quality of life piece yeah. that I really like when companies do that. I just well, stick blue tack to people's heads. He's got the blue that also the head. That's a ball. <laughs> but, you know, all the old teams had spiky helmets, so you just stick no the ball on yeah. the top of the helmet. Yeah. Um, I was going to say as well, one of the nice things about this when it comes to the two pledges is that you have that pledge, as Jerry was saying, where you got all the miniatures yep. for it. So if you wanted to use it for blah, blah, et cetera, et cetera. Me. <laughs> oh, Jerry. I've not We're famous, my shirt Mark. since then. Yeah. <laughs> That's odd. Why is our lovely cover image not on that? Because I wanted to show James and Jerry's lovely yeah. faces. Yeah. This is Jerry. 
people but, people come for us, but you know, yes, uh, standees, Ben. Yes, what you're yeah. for. Yeah, the other cool thing is that rookie pledge. Yeah. So if you are more of a board gamer and you, or for example, like me, you don't need more plastic miniatures to paint in yeah. big boxes. You can just get the standee version of that and it plays just the same as the normal game, except you don't have to do any painting yeah. and you can just use the standees. And I freaking love standees in games i think they're so cool especially if the artwork's nice in which in this case it very much yeah. is uh, yeah. and i think they've done a really good job on those 50 dollars so, yeah. for a it's, it's four, crazy good four team yeah. uh fantasy yeah. football game that can be played solo as well yeah solo rules are coming to preview i know you can you can read the the rules and there's even a tabletop simulator demo version as well <laughs> um as James mentioned in the interview, uh, coming up with solo rules is tricky, especially when there's so many layers and resource management in a game like this. Uh, so it'll be fascinating to see how he's managed to bake that in because, my God, that's probably more time and effort has gone into the solo rules than the yeah. core game. Well, you're, uh, you're essentially building play. a computer without the computer. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the, the, core, the core game rules were about 20 pages, which yeah. I think is, is great oh, for yeah. a game like this. Because it's not overly complex. There's a really nice thing at the back of the rule book. Obviously, everything's subject to change, but there's like a couple of pages that are basically just to break down of everything you can do, the dice that you need for it, and how it works out between attackers and defenders. Yeah. And I was, I was, it was a really nice little elegant set of rules. And as we say, like Needy Cat have been doing really good stuff when it comes to board games over the mm. last however many years they've been they've been they've been working on stuff. They did a really good job with Hellboy and everything as well in the past. Hellboy well, League so. of Infamy was great yeah. as well. Um, yeah. yeah, they've done some terrific stuff on the miniatures from Blacklist. Um, are absolutely superb. Uh, I know did, a couple of community see, members picked up their fantasy stuff recently, and it was just stunning. Did I see the miniatures involved in here are plastic? Yes, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. plastic, plastic and miniatures. either one style, piece yeah, or pre-assembled. I'm not sure which, mm -hmm. but they will come that way. So you get the uh, 64 miniatures, um, which is 32 doubled. So, you know, you've, you've got the hits and then you can also use these again as your free agents if you want to start building your own teams up. I do like the look them. of that dwarf guardian because it looks like he's just got a battering spike on his head. <laughs> That's one way of getting through people. Yeah. I'll do it. There are plenty I'd more humans out there, so don't worry about it. Not a way. Oh, yeah, they breed, <laughs> breed like rabbits. <laughs> very much so. Very much so. So there you go. If you're interested in... Uh, playing up some fantasy football mm -hmm. and uh, exploring a new way to play fantasy football as well with a, a sort of a extra levels of management and uh, resource management as well. It's definitely one to check out. I think it's it's worth grabbing the rule book and having a read through it because it's, sure. not, it's not just a bunch of teams. Uh, it's a, a very solid game behind yep. it. But rounding things off for this week, we're going to be taking a look at some stuff that is legendary Ben. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, the stuff of Legends, the board game, uh, is based on a best-selling graphic novel, and it came to my attention because Free talked about this in the news at one point a couple of weeks mm -hmm. ago, which was really cool. Uh, but so this is a um, cooperative game for three to six players where you take on the role of the boy's toys uh, who are trying to find the boy who has vanished off into the dark in the middle of the night and is being hunted by the boogeyman. So your toys will be venturing out into a sort of map-based style board game campaign while you'll be trying to work your way through a maze of terrifying creatures and weird boogeyman creatures. Uh, monsters. Not the puppy. <laughs> Don't take the puppy. puppy. Uh, um, in order to find and save the boy. Now, that also sounds pretty cool. Sounds very much a little bit like stuffed fables and that kind of mm -hmm. thing yeah. that we've seen in the past. Oh, we fine. There's some really interesting twists and stuff within the gameplay of this. So it comes from Kevin Wilson, uh, who's done some really good work in the past on, on a lot of different games, worked on uh, Manchester of Madness, worked on Descent as well, so got a good pedigree to him. Uh, and one of the nice things I really liked about, about this is called Shifting Alliances. Mm -hmm. So while you're all playing these wonderful toys that are the boys' loved, cherished items, uh, some of you aren't working for the boy. You're not trying to save him. Mm. Some of you are working for the boogeyman and you're trying to make sure that he gets lost in the darkness. So at the beginning of the game, all of you around the table are given a card face down that tells you whose side you're on. And so you'll be trying to subvert and lead your other friends off on different paths 
paths throughout Stuff of Legends, trying to take them towards the wrong exit from the maze that will lead off into darkness. And therefore, the boy will be lost forever. <laughs> uh, interestingly, on top of that as well, it's called Shifting Alliances. Mm-hmm. And so both good toys that started off lovely and helpful may turn to the darkness. And those toys that were in the darkness may suddenly turn to the light and find the error of their ways, which I think is really nice. That's um, lovely. The game itself is obviously packed full of beautiful artwork, uh, as you can see here, which comes from the graphic novels and stuff, which is just amazing. Uh, and I really like this this idea of it being almost a semi-cooperative kind of exploration and mapping game, mm-hmm. because yes, everyone's technically all meant to be on the same side, right? But I love the idea that you could be you send someone off to go and explore something, and they could just tell you, "No, nah, I didn't find any clues down that way." Oh, okay, we'll go off in a different direction, and you completely derail the game and take it off into new ways and stuff. And it means that you've really got to play around with that kind of like social deduction thing, whilst also playing around with the tactics tactics that you get within a game like this anyway, where you're taking on foes and all that kind of stuff as well. Um, there's also this really nice kind of like. Um, resource deck management element to the game as well uh, where every player has a set of cards that will enable you to to do certain things during the game but whenever you decide to discard your deck well discard your hand or you run out of cards within your deck you flip a coin as we've seen some of the images and that coin further adds to the randomness of the game because if it lands on the uh, the boy on the one side of the boogeyman, it sends the boy further off into the darkness. Or if it lands up with the boy's face on the other side, then you get special boons and abilities that kind of like affect the game going forward. Mm-hmm. So it's got this really nice thing of trying to uh, sort of like mitigate your bad and or good luck whilst also looking after your deck and then working in the social deduction to that at the same time. So it's bringing together a whole bunch of different genres of board game into one that I think it, I don't think I've seen before in something like this, which is really cool. And and yeah, plays around with that really awesome idea of like a toy box aesthetic, which I think is just just lovely for a game like this. Uh, and it's it's, a, it's an interesting one because obviously it's taking an existing property, a book, uh, but it's adapting it in a really nice and, and interesting way, I think, from what we've seen in the rules. And yeah, of. this is uh, like a really dark version of Star Fables, really. Yes, pretty much so, yeah. Now, yeah. we've actually scrolled right past one of the things that I think is really cool about this, and it's mm-hmm. the actual way they've done the internal storage for the box, because it is mm-hmm. just a pair of toy boxes that close the lids and hold everything it's in right, place. Right, isn't it? Yeah, it is very I, I love when companies <laughs> do that. Again, it's... I've said it before, I'll say it again, I will keep saying it forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Quality of life improvements to any board game are worth their weight in gold. I really like the fact that, again, like Myth and Ghoul, it has the two levels, so Mm. you don't have to throw all the money at the wall to get the miniatures, you can just get the standees. Mm -hmm. The only thing I can see, because me being me with few friends is that it is for three to six players yes so yeah. that may be a deal breaker for some people if they play mm-hmm. a lot of a lot of solo games or a lot of two-player games then yeah. you know unlucky yeah. uh, you need to make a new friend or kidnap <laughs> someone just like the boy in the closet See, uh, it kind of makes fine. sense it kind of makes sense to me because you have that social deduction element and that betrayer mechanic built in there yeah you know, it can't just be 1v1 because it would kind of be unfair to the, the person who's not trying to, you know, leave the boy in the clutches of the boogeyman. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's obviously something that has, has carried over from existing games that have done mm-hmm. that kind of hidden traitor mechanic. But, you know, like um, Dead of Winter or Battlestar Galactica. Uh, yeah. You know, you've got those games that, uh, again, are built for that slightly larger player count. Um, I could say, when, when you see something that's like three to six players, that moves the game from it being something that you regularly play on a Monday night or something to instead of it, it being more of an event game, which I think is quite nice. Yeah. But it means that, you know, if you say to people, right, we're going to play Stuff of Legends this weekend, you sit down on that Saturday, you break it out for maybe four or five hours or something, the game might not take that long, obviously. <laughs> but well, Depending on how far you play through. Yeah, you yeah. put on some nice themed music and stuff in the background and you kind of make it into that more of an event. Uh, it's definitely, it's probably not one that's going to hit the tabletop as often as a lot of the other kind of like mm-hmm. hour long games that you'd normally find. But. I think just as a solo board gamer anyway, I really love the idea of this would, if this would ever be adapted into a solo game, just fighting off evil was a good, you yeah. know, there, there, there's definitely something there that you would be able to go in through a campaign of saving the boy as if you were reading the graphic novel yourself mm-hmm. and taking that journey. There's definitely a lot of movement if it does ever go anywhere anyway. We shall but see. It's, it's, uh, I really love the the game concept. I really yeah. do. And what's this stuff from the three Erd world? 
good ears. Uh, so in addition to the actual Kickstarter campaign, they've also got this really nice um, riddle contest <laughs> running through it. Um, so if you answer all of these different puzzles and you get your answers correct and you submit the right ones, you could actually uh, win a chance uh, of getting one of the deluxe pledges for the game as That's well, which is great. really cool. So you can delve in on this more interactive level mm-hmm. and play through this and kind of like work out these riddles. So if you're like me and you love things like Bilbo mm. and Gollum's riddle games in the in the caverns uh, and stuff in the mountains, then this is something you definitely want to go and check out and have a look at. And it's expanding week by week as the Kickstarter goes on. So like you know, it. are they going to be there for eight weeks? So. Are they tying stretch goals to that, or is it simply just a chance to win? Uh, I think this is tied this tied into the year of you getting a chance to win it. Uh, but I think they're also doing something to do with um, like social goals as well as part yeah. of the Kickstarter, I believe. Um, so there is some extra stuff built into that oh. as well, which is nice. So. Cool. That is very, very cool. Indeed. It is very, very cool. I do like it. And there are 27 days left from Third World Studios for their Stuff of Legends. Mm-hmm. That wraps us up for another week. I know you're all disappointed. Don't cry. You can cry a little. Not too much. <laughs> We're back on Sunday. Come see are. us on Sunday. Yeah. If you're not a member of the Cult of Games, what's taking you so long? <laughs> Come across to ontabletop.com and you can sign up for a 30 day trial and see what we've been up to behind the scenes where we don't let the uh, riffraff in normally. People with Warhammer Plus. Yeah, for cheapest Warhammer Plus, yeah. And with a far larger library. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> if, if you don't need any more encouragement than that, uh, well done you. If you do need more encouragement, then come over on Sunday morning and check out what we're waffling about in the mm-hmm. XLBS, where we'll be sitting down with John, Free, and Ben uh, to have a chat about a week's worth of hobby. Because, uh, you know, news can only take you so far. We want to see people actually using the stuff that they've been talking about. <laughs> and that's what we do then. We explore both our own hobby and the community's hobby in general. Don't forget, if you want to be able to chance to win Kill Team Octarius, you need to be a subscriber to the YouTube channel. Desperately, desperately close now. We should do close. that. Close. Ding the dong. Uh, and that way, Warren will know that you've given him some care and attention and he'll come around your house and thank you personally. <laughs> but until next Friday, bye-bye. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on.